kiss the girl. Either, either kiss the girl or uh, eat those mushrooms. Uh, <laughs> collect those stars. Uh, almost be like, like your brother. This is our lounge music today. You know that. You know, it's like <laughs> sitting there drinking a cocktail. This is good. Oh, was this Mario Two or Super Mario? What was this from? So, uh, uh, apparently, uh, at, at some point, the entire back catalog of uh, Zuntata was put on Spotify. Zuntata is the name of the in-house, I believe it's Sega uh, music group. And so uh, this is one of the original Puzzle Bobble songs. Ah, right on. So so we were in the right neighborhood. Yeah. Well, I had the totally wrong, you know, brand, but, you know. <laughs> so we're going to... You're gonna give it a minute because I don't. When I performed in Japan, there was this band that performed during the show and before, and I forget their name. They were amazing, like this kind of electronica, bubbly sort of pop sort of stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and I just wish for life make could remember it. They were so good. I had to perform seven days a week. They had to do six. So. <laughs> I uh, I miss the days of being able to go see just about anything live. I mean, it's like um, not that not that anyone should pity me, but the uh. You know, you have a kid, and you know that your time is going to get shorter, uh, and uh, you're not sure what you're going to cut, and you find out after the fact because you continue to do the things that are most important to you, and it turns out playing video games more important to me than seeing live concerts. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, dude, like, like my girlfriend here, she has to deal with, I'm like addicted to these Udemy courses and stuff. I'm like, ah, natural language processing, I'm going to go do that. And it's like, what are we doing tonight? I'm like... I was going to sit in front of my computer and learn a course for a skill that I have no use for whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, well, I am a human being, <laughs> and I would like to go outside. I'm getting looked at from across the room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, and you were, I remember you, you talking about this, I don't know, like a month or so ago, Brian, about, you know, the kids getting into, like, self-policing ages. Yeah, and opening up your... I mean, you guys were going to go see... Uh, who was it? Up before... Uh, uh, up at the up the street at the thing. Uh, we're almost there. We're the, almost there. The the, the guy who lost his hearing and then they canceled the... Huey Lewis. Huey Lewis. Huey Lewis. You're going to go see Huey Lewis. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Anyway. The guy who lost his hearing. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It worked. It worked. It, it, worked. Was, it, it worked. was a guidepost. It doesn't matter how, <laughs> what it's labeled. It got I, me there. I watched... I watched the Quincy Jones uh, biography on Netflix to highly recommend it. And I'm like, I wonder how many times now people go, oh, oh, I think that's Rashida Jones' father. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Prepping myself for that whole situation. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Well, I think I'm actually good to start the show. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. We uh, had some internet uh, difficulties. Yeah. Here, while you talk about that, I'm going to find out uh, what this biological offspring wants. Oh, OK. Well, uh, uh, as opposed to the orphan kids he just put in the house and claimed as his own. Well, you know, there were I know there were some little girls sleeping over over the weekend, so I wouldn't be surprised. Also, it's a day off. Also, today's Veterans Day. So I think there's probably yeah. kids. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if there are kids around here. Yeah, did you like like I grew up with like I had a couple friends that were like de facto family members or whatever, and like they could go to the house when I wasn't there and hang out. Oh, um, I don't know if I had anyone on that level. Mm -hmm. I don't think I had anyone on that level. Yeah, my buddy Ken, like I could I could be out of town and Ken could show up at my parents' place and walk in the house, open the fridge, grab something, sit down. They're like, hey, it's Ken. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't have anybody yeah. like that. Yeah, mm. my parents liked Ken better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's. Uh, you guys ready to start the show? You good? Yeah. Anything? Yep. No, I'm feeling it. All right, then uh, take it away in three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Hey, man. The three of us, just like it's always been. It's always the three It's always us. been three dudes. <laughs> the original three. Um, first, I'm going to sh start off with the sh shameless plug, um, if I can pronounce it right. 
Uh, there's an announcement in Publishers Marketplace, which I know you all subscribe to and already know of. But uh, basically, uh, the long of it, short of it is, I have a new book series coming out. Um, the launch date has not been announced, but I am doing a new series. And I'll read you the, the description. is author of the Naturalist series, Andrew Maines, The Girl Beneath the Sea, in which this police diver pulls the body of a young woman from a canal and finds herself in the center of a criminal conspiracy involving half a billion dollars of missing drug cartel money sitting somewhere beneath the waters of South Florida. Uh, this good to Liz Pearson's at Thomas Mercer and a two book deal by Erica Spellman, who's my agent. And Congratulations. Awesome. So, thank you. Congrats. Thank you very much. Sweet. So I still do Theo Cray. I still do this. There may be another Jessica Blackwood book out there, but I'm excited because now we're doing two books, two book series. Yeah. Uh, well, I describe this as uh, the girl with the dragon tattoo meets the hunt for red October. Oh, Ooh, that's great. Ooh, nice. That's a good pitch. So, so there you go. Um, so anyhow, that's my little plug. Um, Man, now we got to say this because as we're getting ready to record this, the news came out. Stan Lee has passed away. Let's look at that. My uh, goodness. 95. What a run. What a run. Yep. What, a, what a remarkable yep. story in life he lived. And, uh, you know, I'm sure now comes the part where a bunch of people uh, lionize him and a few other people point out everything he did wrong in his career and uh, and a bunch of people argue and fight but uh before this it's moment, fantastic for 24 1960 you know you did it yeah <laughs> steve ditko this or something like yeah. uh, uh and and uh, you know what I, i'm going to jump to my plug early um uh, oftentimes i'll plug the uh, the business wars podcast they did a marvel versus dc thing and they 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 portrayed uh, the conflict that uh, you know both the genius and the conflict that happened between Ditko and uh, Stan Lee, and I think it's a it's a it's a good overview primer in the context of Marvel versus DC because Steve Ditko eventually uh, went to DC uh, to, to 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 fight back against uh, Marvel, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. in the meantime, uh, man oh man, nothing but good memories uh, with everything I ever saw that had Stan Lee. I I still. In the in second grade, third grade, remember watching The Amazing Spider-Man and not even knowing who Stanley is, just knowing like I spent the longest time trying to figure out if he just had a weird way of pronouncing the name Stanley. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, but, but I, I just knew he was the voice of the guy that opened up uh, my favorite Hulk and Spider-Man cartoons. Uh, man, uh, and an amazing legacy, you know, and, and, and a thing, a, a long life, which obviously should have been longer. But this is a guy that will point out served in the war, served in the army, signal corps, repair, repair telephone poles, stuff like this. He's a veteran and it's Veterans Day and it's worth, you know, remembering all those wonderful people that have, of you know, fought and served for our country and, and Stan Lee is among them. And so yeah. absolutely sad that we've lost him, but also, a, you know, a reminder of, you know, this is somebody who did an amazing contribution for us in the name of freedom and then went on to shape and help create, you know, comic book history and, and you know marvel comics is a story of a lot of people for sure stan has been this sort of thread that's sort of you know been there kind of uh, you know woven through everything and it's hard to imagine what marvel comics or comic books in general would be like without his legacy i don't think we would have the mcu i don't think we would have had this with this about this person who's been this champion for so long and, and like i said they're controversial stories and people who've you know uh we don't you know pay as much attention as we should but you know stan Stan is, you know, uh, I think a reason that yeah, I think we owe all a debt of gratitude to. Yeah. So, and and you know, I know in in the past few months or so, there's been question about the people who are kind of surrounding Stan Lee and his handlers. His, uh, yeah, yeah. But my understanding is that you know, in the past few weeks, that uh, uh, he has kind of purged a lot of those nastier entities from from his inner circle and is, is surrounded by, I believe his daughter and, uh, uh, people that he, he really trusts. So, you know, that is a, uh, a, a positive, uh, a, a positive turn, uh, you know, near the end of his life. Yeah. yeah I, you know, I, I don't know too much about the reality of what's going on behind the scene there, but this is a person that is obviously loved by, hundreds of millions and millions it's it's amazing when you look at i watched this quirky like youtube you know fan film made for infinity war and it was made by a guy in india you know just some some dude in india who made this thing and had his own little theories and stuff like this and you look at like this legacy belongs to all of us and every one of us and and as you see the marvel franchise expand you know uh you know 
with finally kind of getting bigger, like with, you know, Black Panther and, you know, Captain Marvel and all this sort of, you know, realizing what made Marvel great, you know, the idea that you could be anybody from anywhere and feel like you're part of it. And, you know, that's that stands core ideas of wanting to make people feel included, be inclusive to that. And we have a long way to go. But, you know, he's a guy that was way ahead of the time and pushing towards that. Yeah. So. Oh, boy. All right. Um, now we're all sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so apparently they did shoot a lot of Stan Lee cameos. Oh, oh so, so we may we may see Stan Lee cam- cameos for many years to come. Yeah. Oh, that would yep. be delightful. Huh. I would I would I would love that. that well, and, just... and plus by the <laughs> and theoretically by the time we run out of Stanley cameos, uh, we'll finally be past the horrific plastic robot faces of computer of CG Stanleys. Ooh, I wouldn't even mind a I, CG Stanley. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, or, or maybe you know, maybe, maybe I would rather go the opposite. Maybe at first like like it's a robot, you know, a whole bunch of robots and then maybe one of them like like eh, I got a malfunctioning whatever and then the robot face flashes up at his Stanley saying it's like, "Wow, well, you didn't set your gleep glop." And then that's it. Like, yeah. you know, some, something uh-huh. not 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 to cannibalize you know, I, his goodwill or whatever. I, but. I would like the opposite. If they just like green screen filmed him doing a bunch of like a generic reactions to stuff and they just spent a, like a, a weekend doing like a hundred of them. <laughs> and so just like in Black Panther 3, he's like, oh my God. <laughs> and that's well, it. I mean, that, apparently the story was that James Gunn shot a bunch of them. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Uh, um, so, so that's probably know, we'll what sh- happened. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they, like, what yeah, about just, in-world said... statues or photos is what Knott's in the chat says. Uh, you know, someone was mentioning that's what they did in the 2016 Ghostbusters, is that they had a lot of statues of... Harold Ramis? Yeah, Harold yeah. Ramis. Um, so that's that's probably... That's likely. That that seems very likely. Yeah. Of just lots of illusions or background photos and stuff. That, that seems like the most, like, middle of the road, like, everyone's going to be cool with... Illusions right. to Stanley, right? You know, so, so, huh? Um, yeah. What was he? The bus driver in Infinity War? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just it, and really well done. So you're not. I mean, that's a you know de- depressing movie. That's sad. I, mean, I love the movie, but it's like it's a, it's a lot has the most weight, you know, gravitas of just about any Marvel movie, yet you can have a really light, funny moment there, Stan Lee, and then still be at the end going, this, this, this. <laughs> They even put him in uh, in the, the new Spider-Man game, too. Uh, oh, wait, oh, really? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've not read into that. It's it's not too far in, but I don't know how far you guys have gotten. We we did have, uh, Justin Robert Young is not here with us today, but uh, he appeared on I mean, he's Modern alive. Rogue. He's not, he's uh, not dead. He appeared on The Modern Rogue <laughs> a few weeks ago, and I mean, at one point he checked, slipped, he's alive he slipped into his Alex Jones impression, and I was really taken because somebody commented like, oh my God, Justin Robert Young doing a J. Jonah Jameson podcast would be amazing. And I realized, like, why would you say that? And then you realize, like, in the Spider-Man game, J. Jonah Jameson is clearly basically a stand-in for alex jones doing a podcast and then <laughs> and yeah and this to this kid that was the only way he had experienced that voice or that that, that type of discourse that's funny oh man uh, uh so excelsior excelsior um, and, well, and we what, talk what, a little what does bit that word mean is that just like uh, onward and upward or hooray or well excel be awesome excel is to you know yeah. uh, go above and beyond uh, Sior is um... Spanish for the or. Yes or. Yes or. Yes and. It's yes ending. Oh, that's the improv. It's the improv. Excellence. Cheer. Yes and. <laughs> Used in the names of hotels, newspapers, and other products to indicate superior quality. Oh, right on. Hmm. Uh, used uh, from Latin, comparative Excelsius, from out beyond Celsius, lofty. So. Okay, there you go. Look at that. Excelsior. Oh boy! Uh, so uh, the United States Army has an official Twitter account. Yeah. Uh, rest in peace, soldier. Comic book creator, the real Stan Lee, has passed away at the age of ninety-five. Lee served in the U.S. Army Signal Corps during World War II. We are deeply grateful for service to our country and its tremendous support to service members. Excelsior! And they have a photo of Stan Lee back then. Oh my gosh! That's really look sweet. at young Stan Lee too. Yep. Yep. Look, uh, yep. looks a little bit like a uh, Bob Hope, like a young Bob Hope. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. We all looked that way back then. I mean, they did. Not to say that I was alive back then. That would be ridiculous. So, um, so that's great. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna like that and. You know, uh, share it on the social media. Retweet it. Very cool. So you know, it's 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 sad, sad, sad to lose somebody, but it's a wonderful that they leave us such a wonderful, rich legacy that we get to know who they are. Yeah. So. <clears throat> In other news. Um, time to play the guessing game. Oh, Ooh, good! I, lo- oh, I love the guessing game. This is our favorite segment of the show. Yeah, the weird things. Finally, presents. we got rid of we got rid of the judge. Now it's just Sparrow flying yeah. solo. <laughs> Sparrow in the twig. Ah! Uh, what's up, Twig? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Don't don't put me. Don't don't eat me. <laughs> oh no! I'm just gonna carry you in my mouth as I solve crime. Uh, okay. <laughs> Wee. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, hey, uh, we got a problem. We've got a highway shut down here. Oh, no. In Arkansas. Uh-oh. Yeah, we got it. Uh, in well, Arkansas? We, we, is there some oh. traffic? Uh, Breaker 1-9, uh, what's the, what's the traffic situation? We, we need you guys to come to the scene immediately because we're having a problem. <laughs> Did you update Skype? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, it's, it's got to stop. <laughs> Oh, we need to call AT and T. It's it's acting up again. All right, look quick to the sparrow copter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also, it's not it's really a actually helicopter. Actually, El Camino it's, with yeah. a little propeller on top. <laughs> it's just a. It's it's. We a, probably it's shouldn't a take segue. a car to a traffic backup. It's, it's my a, guess. <laughs> yeah, it's an off road segue. <laughs> just get on my back, Twig. One oh, one off road segue. The two of you riding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of like doing every now and then. Brian holds out his arms and does the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like just trying to grab the we- the. Hand handle from behind him <laughs> i'm king <Whoa. laughs> too soon that's I how just, that's how the actual owner of the segway company died i just imagining it's, a segway with these huge 18 inch wheels that's a real thing that, that is that is literally how the owner of the segway company died oh sure yeah, yeah. yeah. was it the <laughs> owner or the and it's, uh, it, was, it, was, it was the guy original who inventor uh, no no no, no. The original no dean inventor, came and still alive yeah, yeah dean came and still alive oh, okay. the guy who bought the company and owned the company, so the owner of, of of Segway was Segway and off road, and and went over a, a cliff edge. And ooh. yes, okay. Oh, so anyway, well, hilarious comedy. Things. We do that, and then we <laughs> land at the crime scene. What's uh, officer? What what's up with all this stop traffic? What's the situation? Uh, we don't know, but we know it's bad, and you guys got to get ready. And which basically, we're told you're the experts. So what should we preparing ourselves for? Because apparently, we're having some. Traffic shutting down. Something's shut down the highway. Uh, I, uh, I reach into my utility belt and I double check that I have my snake repellent. I have my goblin gloves. I look over on the left, make sure I have my spider repellent, <laughs> and then uh, uh, and then I say, uh, I think we're good. I think we're good yeah. to go. Let's. Is, uh, let's... Is, is there a turned over truck? Do we know a, a source of the uh, of the backup? Maybe. Uh, apparently, it's not. An overturned truck. Okay, oh, so okay. It, so it's not a mechanical. Right, there wasn't some failure that is. Wait a minute. You know what? The, in rural natural. Arkansas, you can have a bunch of critters crossing the road. Is okay. it a line of ducks? Is, is it, it a line ducks? of ducks? Are they too cute to run over? Um, let me let me let me take a look here. Okay. Mm, no, not ducks. No, mm. but, you're, but you're not but, hearing but, any like. Wah, 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 yeah, wah, but wah, it does. Wah. It does sound. Is it a line of creatures? Of, is it migrating creatures of some variety? There, yeah, there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Ooh. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> See, if it was snakes, people would just run over them. I think. Yeah, I think they would. Also, Have you ever run if, over if a snake, was, by the way? No, but I have run over a duck. If it was bees, uh, I feel like you would just drive through them, and they'd go. On, right, on, uh, Be- these would is, not be a problem. Are, are there any crashed vehicles? No, not yet. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, thank that's goodness. Good. Okay. Um, and if it was spiders, again, spiders are very small. You probably yeah, wouldn't even see them. Run over them. Uh, wait, Goblins wait. could be any size. You know what? It could be a cloud of locusts or crickets so thick that, that you can't really don't see even through. feel safe. Yeah. Is it, is it insects? Is it is it a migration of insects? Yes. Okay. Man. Okay. Well, we need I, to let, I, I we picked need up to... on that hesitation. Okay. That makes me feel. You what, know what I think it could what, be. What's an insect that would cause people to stop driving? If there was a lot of. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna. To... Um... They're not insects. They're oh, they're... oh, is it? 
if it's not insects, but it's got to be something big enough you could see it in your car and know you wouldn't want to run over it. Could it be like I, turtles? I think it has to. Wait, 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 it's something that flies, though, right? Surely it's something that flies. Does it, though? Does it fly? Does it fly? Mm, not, not like. So here's the here's the thing. <laughs> Is it chickens? We're getting into this I had area. The same <laughs> We're getting into this area of like zoology where <laughs> there is what people perceive, or, or what we think we go. Because oh, you're like, you ask me, I'm like, I'm like, I know the answer is like, well, no, but I'm like, maybe it's, it's a yes. Because then like, like then I'm like, like no, it's it's it's. it's it. This has me back to uh uh like 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 the spiders thing. Maybe what kind of spiders would would people break for? Like scorpions. Like I actually, if there were a lot of scorpions, I would be afraid of running over them. Wait, wait, why? I don't. Because what if they pop pop, my tire? tire? I just popped a tire. I'm (laughs) I'm tired. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I can't can't entirely blame Um, you on that one. Um. Uh. Uh. So in in the chat, someone thinks maybe it's frogs. No, they, but but, but uh, people uh, run okay. over frogs. We, but we, yeah, also we have we have the clue that that for even a second, uh, <laughs> I'm some, not a frog, like, sir. no rational human being would ever think a frog. I don't know how is that on the insect spectrum. It's got to be something insect <laughs> adjacent. Note, I have an odd story. Maybe it's worth going into here. So I'm in I'm in Shanghai, right? Go to Shanghai. I get invited by the Beijing Circus to go. Per you know, lecture at like a magic convention, they have a big conference of like stuff, and I'm brought over as a magic creator. And I have a, a translator, and and her name's Kathy, and she's she's really really cool. She had actually lived in America, like you know, to worked at a theme park and stuff, and her English is exceptional. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, there's a vocabulary difference. You know, there's there's a smaller vocabulary set. You know, I had like three Chinese words, so what can I say? Anyhow. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna eat anything. Like, I'm a picky eater, but I'm gonna China. Like, I will eat anything. I will try anything. I'm gonna get out of my little. Nah, I don't like this. This little thing, and I'll I'll try anything. Right. Mm. I mean, at one point, I actually ate bees fried in their own honey. Whoa. Oh. Wait, uh, uh, are are the that stingers sounds... a problem, or or they just get soft and you can chew them up? I didn't have a problem. I don't know what they did. You know, like like most bees don't have stingers. So anyhow, like like I most I bees I, don't have stingers. Really? Wait, really? I think so. Well, oh, I, mean, I don't know. I don't think no, I Because I know that. most yeah. bees are not aggressive. Yeah. It's like wasps and yellow jackets I and stuff. I didn't know that. That's crazy. Without stingers. But, uh, uh, you know, I on, on the stream ate uh, uh, scorpion. dried scorpions. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was pretty delish, actually. It, it was pretty um, good. Pretty good. It was pretty good. But you could crickets. definitely feel it traveling down your throat yeah, because yeah, yeah, they yeah. dry it out so it gets a little hard. Yeah. So you feel those, uh, you feel those dragon yeah. claws going on down. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do all okay so something that is like so so here's here's my new theory he said that there wasn't any car crashes yeah the female bees uh are the 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 worker bees and the queens are they the ones that can sting so wow only the worker okay Uh, those are the only ones that come out and say hello yeah uh the okay so it's got to be big it, though. It, it, it has to be of a certain. Are you right? Are you ready? I, 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 listen up, Twig. Okay. This well, is my my joint. sparrow oh, sense is tingling. About the frog thing, uh-huh. all that stuff. So I'm eating some food. I'm eating something. And I go, "What is this?" And she goes, "Um, it hops." And I go, oh. "Frog." She goes, "No, rabbit, rabbit." I'm like, "I go rabbit." She goes, mm, "No, no, kangaroo, no. kangaroo." She's like, "Nope, nope, nope." And I'm 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 going. Is there some like I keep now I'm thinking of the movie Gremlins and like and has a kid I was obsessed by the idea that maybe they could have this really cool looking Mogwai thing and we just didn't know about it but somewhere else it's like oh yeah those things because you know you find species of monkeys and stuff like oh it's adorable like yeah we eat them mm-hmm. you know and then I'm like well, what did I eat and I'm like what hops it's like let's just listen to your water I'm like frog like no not not a frog and I'm like and I'm going like what did I just eat. What what have I eaten? <laughs> you know, I'm like I'm like I can't. Is there a bird that hops? Some spiders hop. There oh, are hop- what's, what's this? And the answer you're gonna go well. That's it's not a very satisfying answer when I tell you, but it just <laughs> explains the difference between when other people have a different word for something right. and you consider it something very different. Uh, is it toad? Bullfrog. Bullfrog. Oh, oh, okay. So you said frog and and her word for bullfrog frog, for bullfrog was very different than yeah. just frog. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and they are different. They are different to us. We were like, you know, it's Kermit, you know, whatever. Okay. So uh, uh, this is my sparrow sense tingling. Okay. 
uh, we, 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 we got a little bit of a response on, um, on it being migrating animals of some sort, a little bit of ambiguity on, the you know, it, it's bug like or whatever. Yeah. Um, it, uh, uh, it sounds like there's no car crashes, but here's my theory mm-hmm. is that an 18 wheeler carrying a crap ton of lobsters <laughs> fell open no. and because I would not run over lobsters if I saw that I would hit the brakes and then help <laughs> like we, we got to get these lobsters into some water okay. that's now what he, I think now, happened he did say that there was no tipped over car like there, there wasn't yeah no I think accident. the back just opened up and now they all spilled out I, uh, I think somebody clipped uh, the, uh, they clipped the, the lock and then uh, they, they were doing their own great escape and then didn't realize that there was a horrible, unpleasant world waiting for them outside. This sounds like a great to- uh, like great Pixar movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, is it lobsters? N- n- no, not lobsters. Mm. Uh, is it close to lobsters? Hey, hey, lo- hey, was was there we? any part of the story as I told it <laughs> that, that seemed to be on track? Uh, I would say no. Ah, oh, oh, doggone it. Okay, okay, no. okay, okay, okay. Something... And you lose just Gryffindor just lost 50 points. Oh, no. 50... Oh, jeez. <laughs> Man, so I, I, I do think a, a swarm of something sounds plausible. Yeah. Something that would, uh, if it's if it's small, it has to be a lot of it, or it has to be something big. And I don't know what's big and straddles the line of being an insect or not. What? Well, it's, it's not an insect. Definitely not an insect. Definitely, Definitely not an insect. Ins- d- d- does it fly? No, he said it doesn't fly. Well, uh, no, uh, no, not, d- not. Does it hop? <laughs> I mean, n- not generally speaking. <sighs> is it penguins? Likes. Is it penguins Wait, in Arkansas? Uh, oh, why would why would the, why would that be anywhere on the insect spectrum? I mean, you know what? Actually, you twig- just had lobster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, a lobster is kind of an insect. It's a giant <laughs> arthry. Does it have an exoskeleton? That's that's a big question. Okay, there's a good one. Yes. Oh, oh, great, great. Okay, okay, okay. So it's not. It's so not funny a... now when somebody <laughs> says this has an exoskeleton. I'm like, no, it does not have robotic enhancements. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh wait, that used so the to be a different thing. thing before we made a cool okay, so it idea. Has an exoskeleton, which is, is, is making me think about scorpions. Smaller again. than my fist. Yes. Oh. Is it bigger than my pinky? Mm, borderline. Oh my god. Okay, what, what, <laughs> what is that? I just saw the look of abject or diameter. Or, what length is or diameter. Oh, sorry again? Length or diameter? Uh, 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 uh diameter. Uh, is it snakes? We didn't get an answer if it's snakes. It's not snakes. It's not snakes. Okay. Was it was it like millipedes or centipedes? Oh. Is it centipedes? Yeah. Is it is it a is it a swarm of centipedes? <gasps> no. Oh, I was just no. doing the centipede oh, music. My goodness. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, I can play centipede in my Tesla now. Oh my gosh! Oh, yeah, because it's got the Atari stuff in it. Yeah, the center console now turns into an Atari. That's, that's amazing. Man. Okay. So it's not. Ooh. But what? Is scary. It would have. It would have to be something that stops people, or could doesn't quite fly. It's. It's not. It's not something dumb like crickets, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> Grasshoppers, locusts. Locusts no. fly. Cicadas. Yeah. They, they, yeah. These are all pretty good flyers, right? Right. Um. Okay. So. So I'm gonna throw a little thing out here, and I don't know if I should give up this little uh tell okay. that happens. Often. When we play this game, somebody will go, "Is it? Is it this?" And then say something else, and then so I'm not in a position to say to clarify. So, so we've <laughs> yeah. walked right past. Is it. it scorpions? No, and it's not. Is snakes. it spiders? It's... Spiders, Brian. It's always spiders. Oh, God damn it! Spiders so many times. I got you right from the beginning. God damn it! It's always spiders. <laughs> <laughs> Thousands of spiders cover Arkansas Highway in huge webs like thick carpet. What? Oh no. my god! Oh god! Oh my god! Oh no! The f- there's, so there's video uh, footage of it. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. oh my god! Oh, that's Lord. remarkable. It is. It is. Uh, 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 it is the end of Kingdom of the Spiders, uh, starring William Shatner, where the whole city is covered in in webs. So they've covered up this like police like uh, barricade, barricade, yeah. yeah. And 
it's there's hundreds, thousands of them, and they're tiny. Oh wow! Whoa. Man, would have been a great time to go get one of those Halloween like fake bodies. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, it, it, oh, all wrapped up in webbing. Uniform on it. Especially one of those with the robotic. It sort of twitches yeah. <laughs> like like it's still in there. <laughs> so why, why Andrew, why was this happening? Just... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I guess that's what, that's what happens when your evolutionary strategy is to, you know, buy as many scratch-off lottery tickets as you can when the conditions are right. And then, you know, that's knowing really that a whole baby. bunch of them are going to oh, die. Oh, my God. Wow. And is this just mating season? Is it that like there's? I I, I think they just had a bumper crop just... of, of of critters. Oh. Yeah, I That's... think the unusually like moist weather or whatever happened, and just a number of things that just oh. contributed to it. My goodness, that's. That's a lot of spiders. So when you go, oh, is it an insect? I'm like, well, spiders aren't an insect, but I'm like, do we? Is there? Because sometimes we have what we call casual categorization of that. I'm like, sure, let me sure, check sure. This so because like I mean, a lot of people would go, oh, it's an insect, and it's like, well, well, no, well it's and not. like, and plus also, I don't even think I said insect. I think I said bug, and then that's that's one of those kind of colloquial. No, you start off by saying insect. Oh, okay, you, okay. You, okay. Yeah, yeah, right, you were right. you were specific. You asked a specific question. I yeah. was like trying to think, like, let me make sure I give an answer. Look that's... At this this is the I... roadside. Wow. Oh my god! And it goes on. So I guess there had been flooding recently, and so there's like a it's like an embankment, and between the water and the road, there's just this white carpet of of web. This is literally Ooh. the end of Kingdom of the Spiders. Uh, that horrified me when I was a kid when it was on television. Uh, oh my gosh. That's oh, crazy. There's so many of them. So, man, it looks like they closed off the road because I guess they don't want to kill the spiders. Though I would I would just say we don't need this road anymore. They <laughs> can... Gov Governor Bryce. <laughs> we just have a new road. Wait, wait. <laughs> 203 alternate. Man, I'll it's, tell you what, though. Uh, it's, it's like theirs. A, yeah, no need for uh, for deep uh, or deep woods off when you're in that area. <laughs> there are zero skeeters. Yeah, uh, you know where there are also no skeeters uh, on the internet on the Weird Things podcast. And uh, if you'd like uh, to help us uh, make sure that we bring it to you every single week, why don't you go to Patreon.com/slash Weird Things? That's where you can support the show. Uh, even a dollar an episode helps out quite a lot. Join uh, the over 300 people who are making sure that Weird Things happens pretty much every week. Uh, with or without Justin Robert Young. Yeah. Normally, we would have just called it all off. Except right. for your sweet, sweet money. And it, this week was especially tempting because we also don't have court killers at all this week. Yep, and and we also had uh, technical difficulties. An hour of technical but, difficulties. But <laughs> like, like if there was ever a time without Patreon, we would have just shrugged and said, nah, we'll Next get time. to it. Yeah. But of course, uh, you guys seem to love the show, and we love to do it, and so we want to keep on doing it, and that's all possible thanks to you generous patrons at patreon.com slash weirdthings. Uh, 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 Andrew, can I can I bring something uh, to to the show? There's a video right. that I saw um, uh, just the other day. That was a rhetorical question, by the way. Oh, did you say no? no. Oh well. Uh, please, please, please. please. Uh, so there, there's a video that I saw uh, uh, today uh, on Reddit. Let me see if I can pull up where I saved it. Um, that seemed totally up our alley. Where the hell is your saved stuff on Reddit? This stuff is, is confusing. Um, and it was a video that showed a, uh, here we go. Uh, watch real life Iron Men launch wearing a jetpack. Is that what it says? Launching a jetpack, uh, like doing land takeoffs of a jetpack. So oh cool so it's a jet wing yeah it's it's a wing it's a looks like maybe a seven foot across fiberglass or composite material wing with looks like four uh, turbines underneath it and this guy just jumped off this platform on top of this extremely tall cliff it's probably what like Switzerland or someplace like this yeah and um, there's several of these guys they're wearing these wow. these power. And and uh, part of this, I, I think I think this video is just like a teaser for a documentary or a documentary series that they're working on. But uh, they, I had so this is them like coming off of like falling off of a um, elevated platform to begin their descent. But my understanding is that there also were ground takeoffs. Whoa, which are uh, very difficult for jetpacks. Yeah, well, you, you have to spend all that fuel to get to get off the ground. That's why that's why normally when you think of a dude in a jetpack, it's uh, fifteen minutes of basically 
you know, what what boils down to a, a, a helium tank releasing gas, you know, blasting you up in the air and then running out of fuel and hopefully you land gently. Yeah. Um. Yeah. These and it's interesting because like these things are like were are these jetpacks? Are they mini? Are they really under the small airplanes? Because there's wings. There's an aerodynamic surface there, which provides some, in theory, some lift. Right. You know, and there's like four turbines under there. Uh, and I mean, it's amazing, whatever we want to call them. I mean, I could totally see this being an action movie set piece of like, you know, we need a, a radical insertion of four super badasses to save the day from some hostage situation there where they have all the radars on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. Like they use like, that's one of the things these wingsuits, you know, is, is helpful for. And, and we've seen that in some movies. Uh, and we, uh, and we even saw, we covered uh, the story a while ago of, of the first person to land unassisted by a parachute uh, or, or a, a parachute uh, only in a wingsuit. Basically, he just yeah. he just he just swooped in at the right angle, mm. uh, slowed himself down the way a, a, a flying a squirrel would, and then flopped into a, a, a pillow. Uh, yeah. uh, and I, mm -hmm. anecdotally, I've heard that <clears throat> one of the ways they smuggle drugs across the Mexican-U.S. border is dudes in wingsuits. Wow. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. I have, I have more stuff I've heard about that. Like, I don't know how substantiated it is, but like, yeah, like basically like, you know, they get paid, like, you know, strap a couple of kilos, get dropped off, swoop, you know, fly low level across the border and then boom. Uh, uh, apparently this is um, a part of something called Jetman uh, okay. for this documentary about them called Loft with the idea of, of working towards autonomous human flight. Um, I, I don't, I don't know exactly everything about autonomous this autonomous but... human flight uh, that, that would imply like just the robots are in charge and you're just the cargo or, or, or autonomous, meaning you have the autonomy to go wherever you want. I, I think it's that you have autonomy. You, you just fly anywhere you want. Yeah. Right. Because like you can, we see them a little bit in, in this clip. Yeah. Kind they're of free clearly... flying through, uh, uh, through these European mountains. Man, that's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Crazy stuff. <clears throat> the the mortality rate on those people is insane. It's insane. And you have a friend that's you know does wingsuit stuff and he just starts rattling off the number. It's like in it'd be like in close up magic, you know, if we just started naming, you know, half of everybody we knew who'd been doing it for ten years, you know. Yeah. Not, you know, sad, but crazy. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, a little bit of cool space news. We've talked about before Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab is a New Zealand American company. I guess that's the way, best way to describe them. And what they've done is they want to go for like smaller satellite launches, right? And they've designed what they did, kind of like SpaceX, is they designed their own engines. They used, I think, the Rutherford engines, which has like uh, an electrical motor part of it that pumps the fuel in there. And the idea is to, you know, really, really low cost. Like a, they can launch one of these things like five or six million dollars. And they're, you know, launching like CubeSat size stuff. Now, granted, if we get to like the big Falcon rocket, you could launch that for the same price because it'd be fully reusable in theory, but we're not there yet. And there's a big opportunity for launching, you know, more access to space. So they had a launch this weekend where they did their first private payloads and were successful. So oh, congrats wow. to Rocket Lab. So. Dude, that's great. And, and that's just a LEO to low Earth orbit? Mm-hmm. I, I, I say just as if it's yeah, not just. still a remarkable achievement of mankind. Yeah, especially yeah. for a new company, right? And using their own sort of uh, engine engine hardware. Man. Yeah, and they're they're like they're actually launching New Zealand. They're primarily, you know, I would argue like basically a New Zealand company, you know. And, and so that's kind of exciting to see other people getting into – this business you know and, and you know and it's hard to be you're you know you got you know spacex is a company run by south african with people from all around the world who've come here to work on it so sure. these things are kind of you know all over the place but it's, it's a great it's an exciting development and congratulations we played uh um a video a while back of peter beck who's the founder like you know with this very super glossy glossy sort of promo kind of thing which looked a little kind of you know maybe a little over the top but they're launching, you know, they're putting things into orbit and you can't can't argue with that. So, again, congratulations to Rocket Lab. Dude, you know. it, yeah, we've talked before. It's like the more players in this game, the happier we are. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the Ars Technica article that I saw about this says that for 2019, they're planning to do 16 more commercial launches. That's fantastic. 
which is yeah that's that's an insane rate to go from not quite zero but to to, to scale up you know and they built their own hardware and they like part of the the rutherford engines are partially like 3d printed they're they're a company that says hey we think we can be disruptive not by taking the old parts everybody else uses but we're going to we're going to build the it's a new generation of rocket company that's doing things a little bit different and uh you know again that's 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 wonderful very 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 cool so this uh so i i'm it's hard to tell scale with these sorts of things but this rocket looks relatively small compared yeah. to I, the, oh it's super tiny well and, and we, I, like i'm genuinely surprised that this can make it all the way to low earth orbit it 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 uh, it quite, again only looks like uh, uh, it looks like a little toy rocket, meters. but it's hard to tell with the video, the, the video and stuff. But if, if yeah. the goal is to shoot up smaller, smaller payloads, then that makes sense. Yeah, I mean it's 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 payload is like I think a few hundred pounds at most. Wow. Uh, and so it, it's a very small payload. It's a I think it's a two stage, um, but you know it's. There's advantages to that. Not everything needs to be. And we've done, you know, one of the things we've done before is like there's like the Pegasus launch system and things like that where you've launched things from underneath airplane wings. And so you can use rockets to do that. So uh, you can, you know, they're going for let's what's the smallest viable thing that we can use to get to orbit and still use useful payloads. Mm -hmm. So well, that's great. Uh, so uh, it, very cool. Um, they say, uh, the first stage electron rocket is powered by nine of the company's Rutherford engines, and the second stage uses a variant of the same engine that is optimized for the vacuum of space. Nearly all the components in the electron are made in-house, and the company uses additive manufacturing for all the engine's primary components, making it possible to build an entire engine in three days. Wow. Wow. Three days? Oh, man. Wow. Uh, I... I, 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 I uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, I've got nothing, man. Yeah. That is remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, these things are way too small to be able to put a person up there, but there is an entire category. And, and just, I mean, there's so many opportunities for satellite space research, things like this. And that's one of the problems if you're trying to do anything involving aerospace. If you're not, if you don't have $100 million budgets, you could, you know, if you just have a few million dollar budget, you're laughed out of the room because there's just not enough really space to do it. And there's spe specifically, for smaller type CubeSat size stuff, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's hard is to get onto. Is them. there a version of ICANN, uh, an international board that um, that 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 assigns space lanes, or is it still truly like, uh, no, up yours, we're going to put it, uh, inject ourselves into whatever orbit we feel like, uh, and nobody can say boo. Well, you have to, you know, whatever country you're, you're, you, you one, you have to sort of respect their, the, the orbit of whatever else is up there. And each country sort of says, hey, this is what we authorize or this is what we agree to. And I think we have agreements between countries. So one example right now is there is a rush to build a satellite, like a really comprehensive satellite internet system, not just, you know, bounce up, bounce down like we have now and, you know, go through your, you know, bounce, send signal down and use your phone to, you know, call in whatever, like a real useful, uh, big, big, in one web is one of the companies trying to build this. And of course, SpaceX is the other company trying to build this. And the big problem is in order to blanket the earth with internet, you're going to need hundreds or thousands of satellites. And we talked about how SpaceX had a proposal they submitted to the FCC, which was something like 7,000 satellites, which is like double the number of functioning satellites that are up right now. Now, I guess uh, just before anyone hits the panic button, keep in mind uh, these would be in a lower Earth orbit, and and as they, you know, as they die and and decay the orbit, they're they're going to fall back to Earth a lot faster, right? And burn up in I, orbit. Ideally, so SpaceX just changed the parameters of their proposal and actually put it in a lower in, into a lower orbital area, like I think 600 miles up or something like that. And basically, the the plan there is to say once you and the term you use to to keep your satellite in the right orbit is called station keeping. And according to their proposals, like if once we stop station keeping or this thing reaches end of life, this thing's going to naturally burn up in the atmosphere after like you know a year, two years, or three years or something like that. And that's their plan is to say, hey built in obsolescence. That was the problem with Iridium. Iridium was this amazing network of satellites that we put up there to provide global communications. The problem with them is Iridiums are very, very far out and 
you had to use fuel to get them to go back in. It was hard, you know, like to try to deorbit them. And it, what happens if the company went out of business, which, you know, it kind of sort of did. And so it's still around, but they had, you know, assets got, you know, reshaped, whatever. So SpaceX is saying, hey, this is our plan. These satellites will be in low Earth orbit. And if once we stop station keeping, they're going to naturally deorbit and then they won't be a problem. Basically, so. it's a self-cleaning thing. It's like, yes, we're going to have yeah. we're going to make a lot of noise at exactly this level uh, at exactly this orbit. So if you're above us, uh, don't worry about it. If you're below us, don't worry about it. And then as as these fall apart, they're going to clean themselves up by falling back to Earth. Yeah, they launched a satellite or uh, one or two satellites. 1010 uh, was their test satellite. And people were curious because, like, it didn't appear to change orbit. And people were like, why isn't this, you know, doing what we expect it to do? Mm -hmm. And now we know, like, yeah, because this is, you know, they're, they're super secretive about this. They're super, super secretive about what their plans are because the company that can provide global internet and there's also agreements between basically the idea is kind of like whoever's the first one to get their network up there it's kind of like they get to have it so that we don't have competing networks which is you know could be problematic but that's like there's this race to do this so spacex has been extremely secretive about what they're doing there because it's you know it could be it's a trillion dollar prize yeah, yeah. well i mean if all of a sudden um you, you know so much of of the arguments that we see about net neutrality and about, um, you know, government intervention for uh, uh, carriers and all that stuff uh, really boils down to people saying, I hate that I don't have more choice. Mm -hmm. I hate that I have slow Internet. And if who if somebody can snap their fingers and say, congratulations, everyone, uh, and maybe not everyone all over the planet, but certainly everyone over, you know, we'll we'll say, you know, uh, uh, you know, within these bands of of, of uh, latitudes, uh, all of you have gigabit, uh, double gigabit, triple gigabit with low latency. Uh, just sign up like that person's going to make all the money. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I, yeah, we don't need to get to that rabbit hole. But like, I don't I don't think the answer right now is to take a horrible company and split it into two horrible companies. <laughs> you know, it is. Oh, is that is that one of the the claims for for which uh, for which provider for Google? Well, I mean, it's sort of in general right now. We're like, ah, oh, it's like I think the answer is let's have new technologies, new ways to do it, and not just sort of lock ourselves into into two awful providers that are the same company, but just you know, I'm I'm red company, I'm blue company, you know, and. Uh, a, a wise man once told me that uh, technology outpaces legislation and that oftentimes by the times things get solved by law, they've already been made irrelevant. Yep. Yep. Uh, gentlemen, um, let me see if I have anything else here in the hopper that we want to bring up. Um, sure. uh, oh, 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 this is a good one. Oh, oh this is good. Oh, this is good. It's kind of kind of relevant. Kind um, of relevant. Oh my God, that's <laughs> that's you know, a, you know how to make a every pitch. Every now and then. no wonder you're a success in Hollywood. <laughs> it's God. kind of relevant, gentlemen <laughs> and ladies. Um, uh, you need to have a protagonist. You say <laughs> a protagonist. A protagonist. <laughs> um. So imagine this, okay, Brian Bryce, hmm. you guys. Working for the Navy, it's 1972, and we're like, you know what? Those North Vietnamese, we need to cut off their naval supply route. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bunch of mines in the sea. Yeah, uh, okay. those 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 things. Uh, they're they're like beach balls with pokey bits with that pokey explode, bits. and then they got the chains, and they look real spooky. And you 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 you, you don't want to hit one. I'll tell you that. You definitely don't want right. to hit them. So we got our boat, we've been pushing these things off, and you guys are in charge. We pushed a bunch of them off, and now we're standing on the deck of the boat and looking across the... And obviously it's ocean, by the way, because they're like below the water, like ocean. Like, man. Right. Great oh, job. Wait, we didn't... Wait. Wait, did, did we paint did we keep the corner? track? Of, uh, we should have put flags up, but then, but then they'd but see, then they the see where the flags are. How yeah. do we know? How, how many of these did we put out, Bryce? We put out a lot of them. Like, uh, like thousands I mean, of them. We put out more than one, which is how many can sink us. All right. Now, now there you are staring out there, and you placed you know eleven thousand these things, and then uh, eleven thousand. Uh, eleven thousand. Don't worry about it. Any one now, of you're which looking at we'll... like this. You just put like a few dozen out here, and and you get this ring, ring, ring. Sea phone, sea phone. Oh, Richard oh. Nixon's on the phone. Yes. President Nixon. Hi. Hey, boys. How are Ahoy, you doing? Hello. President Nixon. Hey, it's me, uh, Bryce and Brian. Uh, uh, we, ah. we 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 finished that mission, Mr. President. Boom. Boom. 
Uh, oh. Oh, no. We got to call you back, sir. Right there. I had several dozen of the mines just exploded. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I hear something in the background. What's uh, going uh, on? Uh, you know what? It's weird because I don't think I see any other ships, and, and I don't think we've sunk. Um, yes, I can confirm that we're not sinking. Okay. Well, uh, uh, Oh my god, I just had a terrible thought. You see, I was listening to the Weird Things podcast, uh, and they talked a about a migration. <laughs> it's only 1972, it's, though. It's a, it's a radio play, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, in this radio play, they had a migration of, of insects that stopped a highway. Uh, I just had the horrible thought, what if a bunch of sea life is running into <gasps> all of these mines <gasps> that we just planted? Because I'm pretty sure the 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 uh, the Viet Cong don't have subs. Oh no, that would be. <laughs> uh, hold on one second. I, I'm gonna put you on hold. Do, 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 do. Uh, give me the do, underwater do, binoculars. Okay, I, I swear to God. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, 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 Bryce, uh, yes. uh, uh, put on the frog okay. suit. Uh, put on, put on. Uh, uh, go swim. Go swim. Uh, grab the snorkel. Use the snorkel. Uh, g- get close. What do you see? <laughs> the snorkel's not helping me if I get close to these mines. But... Okay, well, I mean, just don't touch them. But I mean, you can look at them. Is sure. what I'm saying. Uh, the I'm I'm looking at one of them. Uh, uh, what what do I see? What's, what's... Uh, you see an exploded <laughs> mine, undersea mine. Oh, goodness. and that's it. Is is there any? Uh, hey, is there? Uh, Bryce, Bryce, Bryce. Yeah. I splashed Whoa. I splashed Whoa. the water to get him to come up. Whoa. Bryce, Bryce, okay. Bryce. Splash, splash, splash. <laughs> yeah, Bryce. Uh, look around. See if there's like a feeding frenzy. Like maybe a whale blew up, and now all of a sudden everyone's grabbing the bits. Also, there might okay. be a whole bunch of sharks. Oh, good. Because they they like they, they like, like, like the to blood. Eat flesh. And yeah, the flesh. yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. okay, so I got to... <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Just, okay. None of that. Uh, uh, ooh, I'm back up. Okay. Uh, no, no, no feeding, no feeding frenzies. D- did I see any animals down there? I mean, you saw a lot of like ones going, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> They're learning. They're learning. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, the, uh, uh, I didn't touch so, it. I did nothing. <laughs> so is, 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 there, is right? there any? Uh, uh, hey, look for wreckage. Go back down. Look for wreckage. <laughs> okay, I go. I go Maybe and they I do were look for... sending a bunch of torpedoes around, and we we hit one. Yeah, did they, did they hey, actually work? I found work? something. Oh, I found. Uh, yeah, it's an exploded mine. Oh, never mind. Oh, jeez. Okay, so I mean, just exploding. Working as of, as intended. Uh, hang on one second. Just uh, sure. doo, 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 doo. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, Mr. Nixon. Uh, yes, sorry, Mr. Yes, President yes. Nixon. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my goodness, we're in a real pickle here. We uh, we we have a bunch of uh, we put those mines out, and and golly, if they're not exploding, which um, is what they are supposed to do. Yeah, we, which they are supposed to do, but traditionally only when struck by a vehicle or a blue whale. And apparently, uh, we we yeah. we had neither of those, so we we got a little bit of a mystery. Do you uh, um do you happen to have like mystery solving federal agents that you could? What send? we're gonna do okay. is we're gonna put this in a report, put it in a file cabinet and then put it in that warehouse next to the ark of the covenant uh okay great let's okay. go home well then we'll we'll uh anchors up uh jun 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 vietnam montage there must be some kind of way out of here oh we made it back uh fast forward <laughs> many, oh, no. many, many, many years later. What's with all these hippies? Uh, oh, now we've gotten older. I've had a children. Oh, my first girl. We were like, oh, like, the like, internet is a thing. <laughs> no, I've, I've got a jitterbug phone. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 they're firing Bill O'Reilly. Uh, oh, what's what's this? Uh, ring, ring. Hey, Bryce. <laughs> remember? Hello. <laughs> Do you remember those exploded mines? <laughs> You, oh, hey, we're getting a phone call from uh, Dolores Nip. Uh, what does she do? And she has an explanation for what happened. Oh, uh, oh, oh. Uh, hello, Dolores. <laughs> Dolores. Can, can you tell me what happened? Yes. Also, uh, 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 colonial life insurance is much more <laughs> more affordable than you would think. Um, so so did, uh, those, are there just a lot of unexploded mines in the Sea of Korea? Sea of Korea? Is that what it is? I, I, that probably is not. Uh, right. different, d- different war. It's okay. Um, uh, it, it's so. Oh. I'm gonna. We're gonna get an explanation, but first we're gonna go back to 1859. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Your name oh, is I Richard. Say, I say, Bryce, it's it's me. <laughs> 
It's me. Two gentlemen, Richard Carrington and Richard Hodgson, both independently, mm. uh, are very interested in a certain phenomenon. And you notice something very, very, very peculiar. You're Richard Carrington. You wake up. Ah, time to go do the thing I'm going to go do. And then you go look at the thing you're supposed to go do. And you're like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Let me go tell. Wait, uh, now it's gone. Uh, 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 let me pen a quick telegram over to Hodgson. Hodgson, I've just seen the most remarkable thing. I was doing the thing that we do, and it was there for a moment, but gone. Uh, are you familiar with this phenomenon? Um, yeah, the telegraph's not working. Weird. Uh, oh, got it. Uh, no, oh, goodness. I, 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 pr I pray to... Uh, <laughs> you just walk over to my <laughs> a house. telegraph <laughs> operator just got an electrical shock. Telegraph oh. pylons are throwing sparks. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, man. This is, I wonder if this phenomena... Wait, could it be sunspots? Could sunspots blow up? Dun, dun, dun. Carrington woke up one day, looked at the observed the sun, and he saw a bright, bright white bead of light, brighter than anything else he'd noticed before. He says, this is odd, and then it was gone. The next day, <gasps> telegraph started to operate very strangely, caught on fire, wouldn't work, electrocuted telegraph operators, and this was called a Carrington event, which is the largest solar flare event that we know of on recorded record. It happened. Is this Guess when there was another large scale solar flare event? Ooh, 1972. 1972. When they're deploying all these mines <gasps> into the ocean off of Vietnam. Holy shit. No they think way. now the explosions could have been triggered by a solar flare because they knew there was a solar flare event. It happened right between two Apollo missions, and NASA was like, We're so glad we didn't have guys up in the middle of that. Wow. Uh, okay. So, so, so. First of all, just understanding solar flares, I would imagine that with the telegraphs, the fact that everything was just a, a, a giant, literally planet-wide uh, network of 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 copper cabling is is a fairly effective net to catch a lot of, of, of energy, for, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, <laughs> and 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 given that you would have, you know thousands of miles of it at a time uninterrupted by you know capacitors or anything that that reduce it or, or that regulates electricity flow yeah uh that's remarkable well, and the fact Read, that it, here's here wow. here's an account from the baltimore american and commercial advertiser those who happened to be out late thursday night had an opportunity of witnessing another magnificent display of auroral lights the phenomenon has very similar to the display on Sunday night, though at times the light was, if possible, more brilliant and the prismatic hues more varied and gorgeous. The light appeared to cover the whole firmament, apparently like a luminous cloud through which the stars of the larger magnitude distinctly shone. The light was greater than that of the moon at its full, but had indiscernible softness and a delicacy that seemed to envelope everything upon which it rested. Between 12 and 1 o'clock, when the display was at its full brilliancy, the quiet streets of the city resting under the strange light presented a beautiful as well as singular appearance. Um, so, yeah, that was the thing. Caused a big aurora, too. Wow. Oh goodness. Well, and you, you don't think of it as something that could affect something like a mine, like a sea mine, which you would ho hope has certain amounts. Like, well. Remember, like those, and I'm I'm no sea mine expert, but one of the ways those things they're triggered is they actually have like magnetometers in there, and they're designed if some big large metal hole a hole of a ship comes near it. Oh, so it, even if it triggered. doesn't actually hit it, it's, it's just close like enough. It, yeah, it it's, knows... it's, it's like a magnetic switch where it's like yep. it swings to the side and then triggers it. Wow, oh my goodness! So you have these large scale magnetic switches. You have eleven thousand mines, and they think a couple thousand of them went off, and it may have been because of that. Wow. wow! What a satisfying answer to that mystery. Well done. Yeah, That's um, I, I didn't cause a solar flare, as far as you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fine. <laughs> so the Carrington event is worth looking up, though, because if that happened now, um, you know, we don't know. Like there was a report of a hospital where all the iPhone. You hear about this? This hospital where the iPhone stopped working? No, no. Oh, this is good. So everybody in the hospital, everybody in the hospital, their iPhones all of a sudden stop working. Okay. Yeah. I, I think I just, I think I, I Googled it. So I think I just saw the given explanation for it. Yeah. Brian. So, but Brian, if you haven't seen this, this is, this is, 
Never in a million years would I have guessed this. Okay, can you guess why all the iPhones stopped working? I, I would imagine like an update or somebody doing an EMP or or maybe a mischief making. Uh, oh yeah, or maybe like uh, the AT and T cell tower goes down or or. But the fact that it's an iPhone thing confuses me because that makes it sound like it's a hardware baked into what iPhones do. And it was localized to this specific building? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I got nothing. All right. This is crazy because I'll start to tell you. You'll be like, ah. And then it's like, but it's like no, it's not that. Um hospital all of a sudden these iphones stopped working they're like what's going on we can't figure out what's going on and finally for some reason somebody looked up to see what it could have been they were repairing the mri machine he'd be like aha emp no Magnets and, yeah, oh. they were replacing the helium and the helium got loose and they the amount of helium in the hospital raised tremendously and the helium because these the, the chips on these are so small individual helium atoms were able to get into the phone and interfere with the chipsets. Oh, is, is, is helium Waterproof, like a, but not helium proof. Is, <laughs> is, is helium like a semiconductor or a full conductor or, 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 uh, I mean, anything at that scale, you know, my, my word, that's amazing. And so it was just shorting out the phones. Is that what yeah, you Shorting saying? out the phones, got into the actual, like permeated the circuit boards and into like the microprocessors because, and was able to just cause that. And they've, you know, they've tested this. They actually, if you read the warnings, they're like, hey, guess what? Shouldn't be exposed to certain industrial gases, things like this, all that. So, wow. Man, I wonder, I wonder if that would be a, uh, oh, here. I wonder if that would be a modern rogue episode because we have that, uh, well, I guess that's hydrogen, but we could get a tank of helium and just blast it at a phone and see if we could break it with helium. Put it, yeah, so, put it in a bag. Apparently, so here's the Apple is aware and it, and it notes in its user guide proximity to helium can impair functionality and that to recover devices should be left out to air for a week or so in an environment far away from the rogue helium. There's your hint, rogue helium. Brian. Wait, it, does it actually say rogue helium? Yes. All right, that that means it was meant to be. I'm gonna I'm gonna here. You guys do picks while uh, I while I put this in the Slack. <laughs> apparently, also uh, this motherboard article says that I guess they don't use a quartz based. Uh, clock in the phones, and so I looks yeah. like I fix it. Did a video testing this this exact thing, where they had a sealed phone and an unsealed phone, and the phone that was um, exposed to, to helium actually started counting time slower in b until it crashed because mm -hmm. it wasn't using quartz. That's incredible. Wow. That, yeah, that was yeah, you're right. That was the main reason because it didn't use it because they they switched to a newer tech, so everybody will have this problem soon. So, oh my god, dude, that's wonderful. Oh no, uh, the the stopwatch speeds up. Sorry, I said I got that wrong. But that's 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 incre incredible. Um, yeah, if we want to do picks, I've got a pick. Yep. All right. Um, I over the past uh, two weeks or so was binging this show on uh, Netflix. Uh, it is the Canadian CBC comedy Shit's Creek, uh, S C H I T T, uh, Shit's Creek, and it um, it's it's almost like the premise. It's almost like an Arrested Development premise of like this uh, uh, wealthy family kind of losing all of their money one day, uh, and they end up having to move to the rural town of Shit's Creek because on a whim one day the father bought the son. Uh, the town. He just bought the town, Shit's Creek, as a joke, uh, and so they go to live there. And it's it's actually like a really heartwarming sort of story. And I I think part of it is because it doesn't try to portray the Rose family, the the main family, um, as as completely dumb. Like they're like they all have ways that they are kind of out of touch, but equally they uh, each of the different characters have different things that they're really smart and and good about good at and and so you it doesn't feel like i mean they're all fictional characters anyway but um it doesn't feel like oh the rich family is done they don't get it it's that they are all like they all complete each other i guess mm -hmm. um and it's also just really funny um uh i i don't know i have you guys even heard of, of this because i know i've heard no, no, no. it i haven't seen it though it, is it is it i don't want to say mean-spirited but is it is it dark uh oh no it's, that... it's very like it's very positive. It's a very positive show, actually. And, and like, it not kind of punching down at these people or saying, oh, you're you're dumb, whatever, you don't know. Like, no, they actually do know how to run a business. And it also doesn't portray 
um, the 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 people who live in the town as yokels or 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 you know in breads or particularly either, right? resentful of them or right they they do seem like it is a comedy so a lot of them are like maybe um a little oblivious to the way you know the but but that's that's a comedy thing that's not like trying to right. say the, the that uh they're dumb and and i think that's a that's a really nice undercurrent and so you get a lot of like actual heartwarming moments in it it's it's a really sweet show Cool. Uh, so they've got like four seasons of it on Netflix of Shit's Creek. Excellent. Bra bra. Uh, well, I, I I gave it early. Uh, I, I think for the Business third Wars. times I'm re recommending Business Wars, but specifically the Marvel versus DC telling of everything. Uh, it's uh, uh, I, I like it a lot. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Cool. Uh, my pick is a Netflix documentary on Quincy Jones. Quincy. Um, Really, really enjoyed it. Really good. I mean, it's produced by like Rashida Jones and his family, so it's it's you know, I mean, it's not going to be this you know Hard dark hit piece, right? But I mean, they get into like you know, it's, it's, you know, it's marital problems and stuff. But but you know, the, just a really neat overview of this amazing legacy and you know where it came from. I mean, this guy born extremely extremely poor in Chicago. Well, we're all technically born poor, but a family, you know. Um, in uh, Chicago, his mother was committed when he was just a kid, a little boy, you know, uh, you know, in the 1930s, you know, I mean, it's just, 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 you, you look at what this guy's seen and what he's gone through in his life and his musical legacy and what he's done and just groundbreaking, groundbreaking what he's done and, and building other stars. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people owe what they have today because of him. So, uh, I really enjoyed it. So I recommend Quincy, which is available on Netflix. Very cool. It looks like that just came out too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice. It's cool. I'll do. I'll do another. Let me do another. Another recommendation too is another biopic. Uh, a biopic worth it for the performance is the My Dinner with Hervé, which is about Hervé Villachez, who is the uh, the, the performer. Yeah, tattoo from Fantasy Island. He's a. It was a, a French dwarf who was, uh, you know, super famous. First appeared in The Man with the Golden Gun, and so Peter Dinklage has made you know stars in a movie about the life of of, of Hervé. And her, uh, Dinklage's performance is great. He Hervé had a very interesting way of speaking, which was this, you know, f was his French accent and whatever, and, and he nails it. I that the framing device for the thing didn't really work for me because it was like about the true story about the reporter who got the last interview, and we go a lot into that guy's life, which I think he had an interesting life, but I'm like that should just be a different movie, and to go back and forth because it means that we get less. There are stuff and accounts in Hervé's life we don't get that, that aren't in there that I'm like, we could have had those if we focused on his life and not, you know, and I think the reporter comes across as extremely unsympathetic. So it's like we're spending a lot of time with somebody who we're not don't even caring like. about. Yeah. And, and you know, for Hervé, you know, his life was every every biography, you have to simplify things. And that's the problem of a biopic is you have to simplify and sometimes you simplify if you you simplify for expediency and I, we wouldn't have had to simplify much or get rid of things if they spent more time on Hervé. But yeah. Dinklage is amazing. Dinklage is great. Dinklage is absolutely great. It's it's. I love the fact that we see Peter Dinklage in roles that have nothing to do with height, nothing to do with stature, and just it's a, a guy who does a thing. We've seen that in an X-Men movie and I think you know in the Thor movie – or excuse me, in Infinity War – and here he's doing a role like, okay, I'm gonna play, you know, I'll play a little person here because he's a famous little person, and he's not a lot of people can play that character. And Dinklage does a great job of it. So it's cool to see him do this, but I mean, I just love seeing him in, you know, anything, you know. Yeah. So. And this is a, an HBO film, so. Yep, HBO film. Uh, my you'll... dinner with Hervé. So. Yeah. Cool. cool, gentlemen. It's been filled with spiders. <laughs> <laughs> it's been weird. <laughs> All right. Okay. Quick break. Yeah, we'll take a quick break. Uh, uh, we'll be back in uh, just a few moments. Uh, awesome. We'll be back back in a few moments with after things. I have um, I got a chance to play a few video games over the weekend. For the first time, I mean, some. Uh, the, it was my first time playing these new games. These games, anyway. Oh my god. But uh, I, I think the one that I got kind of the most uh, enraptured with 
was a um, uh, it was Two Point Hospital. This is a um, uh, kind of a re uh, one of those revival sort of games uh, where it's like a, a revival of like the theme hospital, and I think it's a lot of those same same folks from from the hospital. Um, it's it was it's really neat. What I think is really um, really nice about it is that uh, it it. Tutor it, the, the way it like starts the early game in sort of tutorializing you bit by bit is really good and has uh, you can like do a level and when you're done you can go out to the map and go to the next one or you can keep playing to hit these like higher level objectives and I think that's really uh, uh, a really helpful way to do stuff because you can actually um, um, you can kind of like reinforce um certain states of play really early on uh, without getting someone all the way immediately into all of the systems. Here's system after system after system. Like, like you can actually kind of be like, okay, no, I've got it now. I know this is. I should be laying out rooms this way. This is how I should handle moving rooms around. This is how I should handle structure stuff. Um, and then move on into higher levels. That, that's, that's a really cool uh, way that they've done it. Um, there's some quality of life things that are not great. I think some of the reporting, like the financial reporting parts of the game are not like great. And I think that's really important for any sort of building sim sort of game. Hey, Andrew. Hi. I uh, hope you didn't hear that threat against my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, uh, hi. <laughs> You're you're in front of dozens of people right yes. now too. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> She's a behind the camera person. Um, so I got a chance to to, to try that. Did you ever um uh, did did you ever get into Theme Hospital, Andrew? Was that ever a thing that was on your radar? Theme Hospital. Theme Hospital. It was a British video game, and it oh, was... Bryce. <laughs> Look who you're talking well, to. Here. Uh, I I only asked because it it's it was like a I don't know it was it was of a time where you you might have played it. It was a big thing. Uh, I, oh, Brian, I, Brian just walked in. Let me ask. Hey, Brian, did you ever play Theme Hospital? You a Theme Hospital guy? Nineteen ninety-seven. No, I don't know what that is either. I like because it's of a time because you know an oldster like yourself, Andrew. Well, no, I just the Theme <laughs> Hospital was a big game, and anyway, I was just saying they revived it with an as a new thing and i played it over the weekend right on cool um, yeah. i mean i i when i was a little boy <laughs> let me explain playing video games what that meant it meant going to the library putting my name on a list and waiting for my slot to sit down at the apple II to play oregon trail mm-hmm. that that was and then finally when we got our console our first console was not put in a cartridge oh, oh no it was the switch we could play like breakout pong or whatever you know that was and then when the atari 2600 came out oh my god that was like just the idea to be able to play different games and like to have cartridges and stuff and do that remember the smell of those cartridges yeah man don't even get me started do you remember the jealousy you had to everyone who had a coleco vision yeah, my grandpa had a Coleco Vision. He had the Atom too. He had like that, you know. So, um, uh, I remember then years later they sold a bunch of those like surplus parts on like you know through surplus electronics companies, and I thought of like, man, it would be so cool to try to build a robot girl out of those. <laughs> well, they've got um, they 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 there's like a, a a trend right now to remake classic consoles you know there's like the the nes mini and the super nes mini and playstation just put put one out for the original playstation uh but i i think i saw a few weeks ago that they had done one for the was it in it wasn't in, was it the intellivision it was it was one of the like com, those like computer game uh uh like an intellivision or uh i i don't know exactly but uh you could do that what was the the or what was the the console that was the it was the home one and it actually had the CRT thing built into it. The 
uh, the Spectra Vextrex. Something? Yeah, yeah uh, uh, Sears had it. It was uh, it was vector no, art only, it. and it was um, somebody just said here Vextrex. Yeah, Vextrex. Yeah, Vextrex sounds right. Man, that thing was amazing because it looked like exactly like the real oh arcade my gosh. games. Like yeah. that that shit was gorgeous because like uh, not clunky pixels. Everything was. Um, oh, and this precise. was the one where you put like the overlays on it, or oh, the fake color, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa, brilliant! Very cool. We solved color. Oh, you do a frame rate thing, some new phosphorus. No, acetate. You know, overhead projectors. <laughs> That's a clever. That's a clever solution, though. Mm -hmm. clever well, that was too. Too is like you'll go back and look at those old school LCD games and stuff, and how they would figure out because you had to build your animation and everything in there, and like have like thirty. You know, you could only have like thirty little registers to be able to make. You know, do kung fu kicks, points, and everything you're, else. You're talking about like the game and watches that. Yeah, uh, the yeah, Nintendo those, yeah, put out. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Uh, we we got an email for after things. That's uh, a good one. Are you guys? Uh... Oh, great! Yeah, no, I'm 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 100% dialed in, ready right. to ready to rock. Then take it away, Andrew. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. Brian Brushwood, and that's it. That's it. All done. the whole gang is here. Only us. Done and done. Uh, so we love it when you guys send us questions because, uh, we lack imagination and don't have anything to really to say. <laughs> and, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to read a question, which Bryce sent to me to read because of the way it's sort of, uh, phrased. It says, Bryce, I, I, comma, Mr. Awesome, <laughs> comma, <laughs> um, should be a period after Mr. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> no, I wonder if you and the unless, guys... Unless that's how the, his first name. First name, Murr. Yeah, I'm like yeah, Dr. It, Pepper. I don't have a period he's, after he's, the... Yeah, name. that's right. <laughs> I wonder if you and the not awesome guys could discuss <laughs> top-level <laughs> domains and if they really need a .com for their project. If people primarily arrive via search and social, does the domain name matter? On a related note, do they even need a website? Would a Facebook page do just as well? Arigato, Mr. Awesomeo. Lyle Sturm. <laughs> um, I think uh, there is something about having a dot .com uh, over pretty much anything else that, uh, you know, we, uh, so we, uh, uh, as a, uh, what is it, a disclosure, like, yep. we have a history of, of, of doing, doing uh, ads with, uh, with domain.com domain yeah. and, and selling, like one of their selling points is dot .coms have a, a, a what is it? Well, I, you, I I don't but, think I'm I don't think I'm talking out of cl uh, school to say that that you know, as with any sponsor, at different times they want you to focus on different aspects. Sure. And there was definitely an arc where they wanted us to talk about all the creative top level domains that you could do. We always we we love riffing on dot pizza dot space and, uh, dot and us stuff. right. Uh, uh, and then but, uh, um uh and then. Other times, they wanted us to emphasize the credibility that comes from a .com or a .net. And in the mm -hmm. hierarchy, it does seem like .com is king. Right. Uh, man, if you're an oldster like me and Andrew, the, uh, .com is the 1-800. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Dot .net. net is the 1888 okay and then and then you know uh, everything else is 1866 or 1855 uh, right. and so on yeah so so like getting a creative dot level a top level domain is nice cuz it's a way to kind of show off a little bit of flair i guess you know if you look at like like peach it was peach.cool right or um i don't know i, I think it is helpful uh, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, I would say I the know. only reason to not go for a dot com is if if the other top level do domain completes the word or embodies something about it. Like dot right. dot pizza is a fine domain. Like if you want to sell pizza in your local yeah. Austin dot pizza, that's all you got to know. Mm -hmm. Just get everybody saying Austin dot pizza. In fact, I'd be curious who has it. Yeah. Uh, like, we'll like also it needs to Oop. be no the name of your business, right? It can't be Domino's dot pizza or whatever. Like that's dumb uh, because then uh, I like, could, well, I, yes, you should have Domino's dot com. Domino's should have Domino's.com because or, they're so big. But right. I also can see because like a taco or a Taco Bell got TA.co. All right. That's fine. That's great. And so it's supplemental. But you don't go to 
you go to talk it, about it. It's good for a shortener. Yeah. Uh, hey, step number one is if you're avoiding the top level domain because somebody has a name similar to yours and they're in the same space as you, bad idea. That's right. problematic. If if you're like, oh, I couldn't get this. I want to do uh, you know, a music discovery th system, mm -hmm. you know, but like newartist.com's taken and it, they do the same thing. I'm going to do newartist.music. Yeah. My, actually... mine's mine's Napster with two Ps. <laughs> yeah. It's well, totally different. I I had that uh like a week or two ago. I I've been watching a lot of Tasty videos on YouTube, the BuzzFeed brand Tasty, and I went to their they have a website with all the recipes and stuff posted, and so I went to tasty.com thinking that was it, and that's a completely different company. But they don't tell you it's their tasty.co or whatever. Right. Uh, but there is confu there can be confusion if you don't promote the website uh, correctly and you'd have a not .com. You know, I, I will – my – yeah, I just went through this because I just bought audiomatic.com for the project I've been you know talking about. So I, I spent oh, – right. spent, spent a nice chunk of change to buy Audiomatic, right? Mm -hmm. And I love the name Audiomatic, you know, because it's just cool and Audiomatic.com. And, you know, when I went through like endless – possible combinations and one of the rules i say is like you can be clever once in your name you don't get to be clever twice because then people can't remember and so automatic's kind of like automatic but it's automatic that's my cleverness if i went for dot net or anything else it'd be weird i had a friend once who wanted to launch an online magic business called me up says oh you just got this name you know we'll call it like you know you know uh you know science dash magic.com so i'm like dude don't can't do a dash He's dashes like, are tough yeah, I'm like, he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, one is that there's somebody who has that name that you already want, and they're doing something kind of like it. Two, you got to dash. Dash is not to say like, oh, it's into the world. You can never do that. If you have a choice, don't do it. How many websites do you interact with that are well-known that used? And I'm sure we have a few ones that we do, but really dashes are hard, and it also means that somebody else has that other name, and that that's where the confusion sets in. Um this question is, you know, you don't need it. Does it be .com? Like, there are great companies that use other ones, you know, like, you know, I just mentioned, like, you know, in AI, there's a lot of companies that use .ai. You know, Loeb.ai just got bought by Microsoft, and, you know, they do kind of a cool thing. And you can use another top-level domain. The one thing you do not want to do is he says, would a Facebook page do just as well? So so, okay, let let's make as short a side journey as we can because I think we're all in agreement that building your business on any other platform uh, with no escape valve for, for for when they change their terms of service or in the case of a serial offender like Facebook that mm -hmm. constantly encourages you to build a business on its platform then changes the rules and tries to extract money from you a, a, a serial extortionist. Uh, 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 Facebook, uh, them specifically, but in general, any well, platform, you've got to be highly diversified. Yeah, because uh, I, I see that a lot with like restaurants, right? Restaurants just need a place to put their their uh, their open times and whatever, and they don't want to build get a Squarespace or something, so they just do Facebook or or what have you. And if like you should have an online presence because people want to see your menu. Like, I, like I'm thinking in this very specific instance where I find something that I'm looking for doesn't have a website or they have Facebook. And even then Facebook is confusing and kind of a mess for that stuff. Plus also, if you have a, if you have a website, then Google is getting increasingly good at scraping your website to put up important things like your high traffic hours as reported by other Google people or when people are searching for things. It, it, it sees what your hours are and puts that in the summary on there. And uh, I, I think Google is still a dominant force over Facebook, and you will not get that advantage with yeah. Facebook. I, and By I, all I, means, I, have a Facebook page where there's sure. info to get hold of you or whatever. By all means, have a page. That should not be the thing. Anytime, like, one of the things there was, uh, I forgot who it was, but somebody was very critical of Zuckerberg and Facebook and says, a platform allows other people to come in money, and even and the total size of the platform is bigger than you're worth. You know, like, you know, and that's, that's why... Uh, you know, a platform where people can go in and like you can go in and you can create apps and put them on iPhone or Google Play and the app developer gets most of the money, whatever, like this sort of thing. And if you if it's IP, you can move elsewhere, then it's a wonderful, cool thing. Facebook wants to make kind of all of the money in the platform. And that's why people will tentatively try to build things there. But you find out long term, like 
the really great game companies are not primarily going, well, we'll build it first on Facebook because they've learned that lesson that, and that's the problem. And, you know, Amazon's a platform where most of the money is made by other people outside of Amazon selling through Amazon, but Amazon gets a piece of all of it. So Amazon makes the most money. So platforms, you know, if you own a website, you own a URL, you pay your 12 bucks a year, you get to maintain it and you own it forever. You build your main thing somewhere else. Bad. So let me, let me throw in a, I don't know, sort of a, a, a thousand feet up view on this kind of thing. One of the things that uh, I think story matters. I think clarity of vision matters. I think narrative matters. I think that when a brand does well, it knows exactly what it is. And I, however, I think a lot of people have an idea for what it is they want to provide and what the voice should be and what the name should be. They do those things first and then they go to try to find the domain. And upon finding out that it's already been squatted or it's a concrete company or it's whatever, they, they try to find a variation because they don't want to flex on the big idea that they invested so much effort to figure out for themselves. Uh, I have found tremendous benefit from having a general idea of what you want to satisfy, but being flexible on the grand vision. Uh, for example, you know, uh, uh, right now we're dealing with uh, uh, builders uh, as, as we build out, you know, Diamond Club Studios and the Monorogue World Headquarters and all this stuff. And what the builders would love is for me to submit a five-year plan, master plan from the beginning or whatever. And so that they, you know, why go in stages? Just build one giant mega thing. Well, I don't have that kind of money. And so as, as I'm fond of repeating to them, uh, the vision can flex to what is possible. Uh, mm -hmm. That is easier for me to do. I can change the story easier than I can pay for uh, whatever vision I have right now to be exactly executed. And so likewise, let's say you get to that point where uh, uh, the name that you really like happens to already be taken, uh, you know, be flexible. Uh, understand that Amazon is a terrible name for a bookstore. It's also a terrible name for the world's largest company. It's also a terrible name for a fulfillment company. It's a terrible name for a, a web services, a, a time slice offering, uh, whatever. And yet it works fine because that happened to be the name that he could afford to buy. And it doesn't yeah. matter. People will project eventually whatever you define the thing as onto that word. Now, I'd, I would I would add a couple of addendums there. But I would say, like, if you went back into 1990 and I said, hey, let me name you some of the biggest companies in the world in tech. Amazon, Google, Uber, <laughs> Tesla. What Fiverr. do they make? What's that? Fiverr. Uh, yeah, like, like, like they're, they're big. Let's go big. Well, sure, sure, sure. Bit, bit. Yeah, the big is like, what What do they make? You would have no idea. Now, if I said Apple, you'd be like, well, they make computers. Well, how did you know that? Well, because Apple's a thing now. You'd be like, oh, yeah. and that. But even like none of those companies tell you anything about what they make. Now, I would argue, and I've heard Justin make this argument too, like the name people will go to like, the, people will accept the name eventually. Amazon is a great word. It's a good word. You remember Amazon. Everybody already has Amazon in their vocabulary. And then by association, we then shift from in the early Amazon. You look at the Amazon logo, had the river and all this. It had nothing to do with, but there was a reason like, oh, the largest river, we're going to be the largest, you know, source of books, whatever. And then you just, you just got used to well, Amazon's easy to say words that are easy to say. Google's a funny word. And if you, you know, if you're like us and you knew what a Google was from math, you're like, oh, that's hilarious. Look at these nerds did. And it's cool because I'm a nerd and I know what they meant. Google was funny, like that age of the Internet, where like Yahoo and Google. But but it's also smart because they misspelled it. Right. Uh, they spelled yeah, it different than the actual word yeah. Google, yeah. Uh, which I think was key because then it became uh, uh, the word one, you could trademark. Exactly. Or, or and specifically the only thing you would find if you searched for it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they could make that happen anyways because they were Google. Well, they, they, that's true. Yeah, they eventually <laughs> became a verb. Yeah. Um, so there is there is I don't think any name is fine. I think you need to think about names that are it's like in comedy. Certain words are funnier. You want a name that you go if you find when I work on a project and I and I suggest names to people and we keep mispronouncing it. Remember what remember what Amazon's first name was? 
No. Was, uh... Ah, oh, grasshopper. Uh, <laughs> Amazon, Amazon, Jeff Bezos had a different name for the company. And he realized it was a horrible name and an argument that, that some names are worse than others. Uh, book, booksamillion.com. What's that? Book, booksamillion.com. No, he, he, he thought, hey, you know, I want it to be because he was focused on the idea of customer service, the idea of everything. And so how cool it would be to, to get, you know, get whatever you want. It's like magic. So he thought, what about Kadabra? Ugh. <laughs> a little bit close to cadaver right? and everybody his yeah. lawyer everybody kept going cadaver no no cadabra and he's like hmm you listen to him talk about that and it's 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 funny because you're like oh yeah you know maybe maybe that name is worse although, so although, although i do think abra would have been just fine abra like the pop band uh no 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 well, well, like the pokemon is there a Pokemon named Abra? There's a Pokemon named Abra and a Pokemon named Kadabra. Well, I'll, I, of the two, I think Abra would be better than <laughs> Kadabra. <laughs> I could see a future yeah. with Abra. Uh, the uh, uh, Another good example of this is, uh, uh, do you remember the Tom Hanks directed movie, uh, uh, That Thing You Do? Uh, yeah. They had a, The band had a very clever name. It was pronounced The Wonders, but it was spelled... O N E, like oh, like like they're the wonders, uh, uh, and uh, about the fifth time that they got introduced as the Oneeders, they finally <laughs> get told by an adult that they're now just the wonders, W O N D E R S. And that's that's a big part of it is how easy is it meme ability transmission of what you're doing. Amazon is a lot easier to say. Oh, do you hear from Amazon? What's a, oh, it's a company. Now you know that's a company. You never forget that. Cadabra, like what? Cadabra, this, 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 whatever. Google, once you see the word, you hear the word. Oh, that's a funny, it's a company with a silly name, and then it becomes the thing you know. So it should also um, be, uh, if uh, take it from a guy named Brian Brushwood, uh, have it be a thing that you never have to spell, like whatever yeah. it is. Even if it's a made-up word, uh, 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 like Cracks yeah. with the K and an X, uh, or, or or oh or yeah, don't have jarb like... with J A R B. Make it make it as short as possible, um, and and as easy to even if you do have to sell it. Like it was, it took me it took me five years before I started saying there is no C in Schwood. Like like mm -hmm. that is enough that people tend to get it right. Yeah. So it's like, well, how else can you spell it? Well, it's going to be S H W O O D. The only question is whether or not you put a C in there. Yeah. There's yeah think think about that I've gone through that too where I've had like told oh this thing but I, but like it looks great when you see it like I've had and that was thing you know working like audiomatic was like I had a couple cool I had a really cool thing if you saw it you go oh that's cool but I'm like well if most people are telling you go to this dot com like you you have to tell people how it's spelled or how you failed there there was very recently. And uh, this will elicit eye rolls from Bryce, deservedly so. Uh, the a, a case where we had been banding about names for an upcoming project that will be a heavy focus of this next year, yeah. and I realized that I had not nabbed the the dot com. <laughs> That's right. And then uh, you got it right. Uh, it I did. A, okay. I did. Uh, and for the first time, it's the first time I paid premium prices. I paid three hundred dollars for the domain, <laughs> which, uh, when we reveal it, I hope most of the listeners will think uh, worth it. And uh, it's great because. I can't think of a way to misspell it. It's, it's a not dot very com. long. It's not long, which could it's be a problem. Three syllables ends in a dot com. Sure. When you say it, you hear it. You can't mess it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so in that regard, uh, I would say, uh, you know, consider, if, you know, if, if if it's affordable and if it's the right name, then you know, consider paying premium prices. But then again, like, I don't know, uh, that's something I would not have done in my early days. I would rather have just come up with a different name than pay $300 for a domain. Yeah. Uh, and, you know... <laughs> now you tell me. It, it, <laughs> I just paid a couple grand. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's only going to get tougher to find good short dot coms, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I don't, you know, there, there are things like .co. I had a .co for a while. Uh, or I guess I still have it, but dot co feels weird, uh, especially if it's not like dot co dot uk or dot co dot nz, like a like a national code. Right. Um, I don't know, man. Like, I, it, it's not the most important thing, but it is. It, whatever the name of your project is, it should be a good name in all the ways that we've. Just yeah, talked I about. would say I would say, if you're at the point where you're thinking of a lesser domain than .com mm -hmm. or adding dashes or underscores or whatever, then 
reconsider the name. Names will feel mm -hmm. precious to you and not to anyone else. As 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 sure. uh, there there are a billion great names out there, and then yeah. and then beyond great names, there are plenty of mm -hmm. nonsense combination of syllables that have yet to have any meaning ascribed to them. And and you could be first in that territory. And you can if you make it worry more about. Is it easy to spell and is it memorable? Don't worry too much about people associating it with your product. You know, that I would say that that's that's like like I said, Uber, Google, Tesla. These are things that if you you know, Tesla was the name of a dude. You know, mm. Uber means like Uber good. Uber Uber could be anything. Uber could have been the next Amazon. Uber could have been Google, and they used Uber for that. Um, you know, Elon Musk Elon Musk Elon Musk owns <laughs> X.com. That's right? uh uh uh, uh, there, there, there's nothing on there, right? Or is there anything? Because I remember, uh, well, there's only a way to find out. Yes, there X. is. <laughs> is. Oh, hey, look, uh, there's an X. It's just the letter X. <laughs> nice. Um, good use of a very expensive property. <laughs> yeah, and it literally, if you look at the inspect the source code, it's just an X. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but yeah, don't don't get hung up on. I've got to make it so clever so people know what it is. Whatever. It's just a thing that once you know what it is, you can find it and go to it again. And you can come up with names like eBay. You know, eBay eBay has nothing to do with it. It is E in it. The only thing to tell you from the time it is PayPal. Pal. We're going to add pal to the word. You know, we want a payment. We can't find a good payments company, but we'll add pal. We'll be okay. your PayPal. Done. Yeah. PayPal is easy to say. It's silly, but easy to remember. Yeah, but, but it... <laughs> You know, a, a, a good name also can convey an awful lot, you know, like PayPal uh, if, if inventing a, a book swapping service called Book Buddy or whatever, or, or Car Friend or I, I yeah. mean, just you, you, you could staple <laughs> two words together or you could go through the dustbin of of uh, spend some time at archive dot org looking through all the Prelinger archives at all the copyright free everythings um, because of his untimely death in 1921 Houdini uh, you know that 70 years after death uh, copyright has expired on all that stuff and uh, that's part of the reason we're in 1921 uh, what's 1926. that 1926 26 okay, that's, that's what it is yeah 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 that's so, way so, before there, there are a lot of things that make that stuff public yeah. domain right so so you i mean you know even his name you could throw uh, houdini's name on stuff hmm. there's no shortage of people throwing <laughs> einstein's face and name on stuff or right. you know and, and and tesla it was another good pick because it was of that same time so uh you know look, look through the dustbin of history for something yeah. that is uh, embodies the character of what you're up to and consider a, a derivative of of that stuff also to um lyle or yale's uh uh email do, do you need a website you should have a website like mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't need to be, like if 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 you're making mousetraps, you don't need to have a super active website, but you should have a website that says we sell mousetraps. You know, yeah. uh, I have where we are. I yeah, I have a personal website that I'm never going to update until something changes. And but but then but I have a website that I can send people to so that they know about me and I don't need to maintain it. But meanwhile, I still have that place on the internet where if people googled for bryce castillo they would probably see something like that i yeah i recommend a bare minimum a website that just shows how to reach you if you want to be reached the other thing is i say this and people it's one of these things it's like when you talk to high school kids about hey you should invest 10 percent of everything you make everything you make put 10 percent away and it's like ah i'll start later you tell us to a 25 year old ah, i'm still paying off student loans i'll do this later you tell us to a 35 year old like man i wish i did this earlier in my life and i'm going to tell you the 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 online equivalent of that a mailing list start oh, yeah. a mailing list because yeah at some point in your life you're going to be attached or involved with something and you're going to go, man, I want a really easy way to get hold of a bunch of people who are interested in my stuff or what I'm doing or whatever. And it might be, you know, your wife writes a book and you want to tell everybody your wife wrote a book because there's a lot of people, you know, who would love to have known this happened. It could be anything and everything. So start a mailing list and you could do it for free. You can go to like MailChimp and other services, let you start a mailing list for free up until you get to like 500 or a thousand people, whatever. Right. That's the point where it's really useful. A mailing list is how many times, how many times, okay, Brian, Bryce, hey, Hi. I'm on Twitter. Hey, guys, I just launched a Kickstarter. Can you guys retweet me? 
uh, sure, uh, RT, no response, no engagement because I'm taking your name and putting it in front of people who may or may not know your name. Yeah, and 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 I need some help launching this. I I already retweeted it. What what else do you want me to do? I, well, I, like I mean, hey, because you got all this, you know, and I get I get this from people too. It's like I've had. Uh, one, hey, I want to write a book. Should, should I, I, should I start building a social media following first? And it's like, I'm like, I want to invest in space research. Should I be make a billion dollars first? <laughs> <laughs> and and it's like, I'm like, well, yeah, you should. If you have time to work on the social media stuff, do that. But it's not like oh, I'm going to spend six months on this thing and now I got a hundred thousand followers. Mm-hmm. It doesn't work like that. And people like, ah, I want to write a book. Like, okay, what's your email list? I don't have one. When did you start the book? Three years ago. Did you ask me at the time what to do? Yes. What did I say? S- start an email list, you know? Well, and Dude. also, uh, an email list is something you have to work on, and you have to promote it just like mm-hmm. you promote your own social media stuff. It's not just make it and they will come. You have to A bank account is something tell. you have to put money into. Yeah, right. But exactly. if you never start the bank account, don't don't matter right i agree bryce you got it but yeah, yeah. at the end of your email on your website or this you know i went to an event last week i don't need to mention those you know the reason gala whatever but um you know uh talked to dozens and dozens of people and people there are interested in my books and stuff and if i was i was not promoting to promote but if i wanted to mm-hmm. you know i probably could have got 10 or 20 people on my email list there if i was inclined to do that at that event but i wasn't you know i go to a party probably every party i go to i could get three or four people that have like oh yeah let me know like oh i could you know like oh here's an easy way to sign up just do this if you want to follow if i did that and was you know i'm you know i have enough people Ad, asked to be on as is, but if I was a regular Joe with no social media, whatever, but was interested and did this over the course of a couple years, by the time I get to where I have a book out, I'll have more than enough people to promote or do whatever if I'm doing a Kickstarter or this. So, yeah, I mean, like uh, the, uh, the the guy who invented Vine and just announced his new thing, his his Vine 2.0, like he right. bite bite. Uh, he he was like, oh, here are all the social media accounts that we have for it, and also our website, which is just a mailing list. Mm-hmm. And this thing is not out yet. People kind of have an idea of what it is, but also they are getting people to sign up to their email list because it's important just as much as it is to have your own Twitter or Instagram or YouTube or whatever. Uh, it is also another weapon and tool at your disposal. Before uh, before Scam School came along, uh, the only way I had to try to capture uh, the attention of people who were seeing the live show was every single stage show. I would I would promise a book giveaway, and we would pass around an email sign up list, and uh, and then I would go back to the hotel room and enter by hand the thirty to three hundred emails, uh, including the fake ones like your mom uh, underscore sucks at gmail.org mm-hmm. uh and then uh someone might have it you never, you never know. know but uh but but uh, you know after after nearly 10 years you know that that the 35,000 names is 35,000 names and there's mm-hmm. some segment of people who never would have known about uh, scam school or any of the other online stuff we do mm-hmm. but they happen to see me at a show back at that day and they were hoping to win a free book i mean hell i i i mentioned i had a pop tire uh last week and I went out to a tire place, and when I was getting it done, they were like, uh, they asked me for my email, and they ended up getting it, which I did not really want to give them. But, <laughs> but it, it, like, there's a reason that they want to take your email and your phone number. There's a reason that the grocery store wants to give wants you to use a card. You know, mm-hmm. uh, that's what all of that stuff is for is for marketing. Uh, there and, and there are people that like like I. I wish they did more because I want to know what they're up to and they're not going to, I'm not going to get, you know, overwhelmed by their marketing stuff. They're people I follow and I like who I'd wish I could get, you know, find out more about do it by all means do that. Um, and let me, and it's a great, like, man, like we live in a world where more and more people go, I want to go do a Kickstarter or whatever to like, well, what's your email list size? I don't have one. So in, in what, in what, what version of the future, how far off do you think, you, how many months away are you from being able to launch a successful Kickstarter if you have zero people right now? Mm-hmm. You know, is, is it, is it, you know, and, and it's that weird, like, 
and miracle occurs because everybody falls in love with the thing I'm trying to do, ignoring the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of other people doing things they hope people fall in love with. You know, um, I, man, I'm going to rant. I'm just going to rant. Okay. Can I rant? Go off. I get asked frequently, and you guys probably way more than me, hey, I've, I've launched a Kickstarter. Can you help? Can you help this? I, it's funny, like, I don't, like, ever really, like, retweet them because then everybody wants, it expects me to do it. I do contribute, actually, anonymously to stuff because, like, I have fans and people go, like, oh, here's my Kickstarter or whatever. I'll go take a look. And if it looks cool, I'll like, oh, I'll cool, I'll, I'll support this, I'll do this. And then if you start doing something that's kind of cool, sometimes I will retweet when they've gone out of their way and done a really good job of making the case on Kickstarter for their thing. Mm. All too often, I get this half-assed. They put up one image. I need money for this, and I want, I want, you know, my year, next year's salary to do this project. And I'm like, wait, you're, you want, you know, you want, you want twenty thousand dollars to to write a book. You've never written a book before, and you think this is this, this is how I did it, you know? And it's a little, I don't want to say insulting, but it's sort of. But point is, how much effort you put in there? If you've put in zero effort into your promotion of your Kickstarter, I have zero faith that you'll be able to execute it. Mm-mm. So, yeah, think I mean, about that. And and that sort of like online begging happens everywhere and constantly, right? It happens on Twitch, right? Like you're streaming and someone pops into your chat room and says, I'm also live. It's, uh, I'm going to keep my tab open for you. I saw that yeah. the other day. And I was like, this is okay. This is a very like obvious spam well, boy. And, and, or, and begging is, the difference is begging is, I'm asking for something, but I'm not really going to give you anything in return. Right. You know, that's what begging is, is, is other than the warm feeling of helping somebody else, you know, offering a cool thing like, Hey, yeah, I've got a, I've got a Kickstarter. I've got a really cool project. I, I busted my ass for several weeks making this great video and doing all of this with no guarantee of reward. If I know you'll go that far without being sure if you're going to get any payback from it. Oh my God! Well, this person's probably going to deliver and do a really good job. If it's this half-assed, like, yeah, if you, if I make the money, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Mm, sad. Yeah. Um, like looking at just the kickstarters I've contributed to recently. This was actually came from the Planetary Society. Uh, so he's got a shirt that says oh, yeah, "Remember, chicks they do uh, stay they unextinct." Pre- yeah, so that was the the big uh, you know comet that you know asteroid that wiped out you know the dinosaurs. So. The Planetary Society does cool stuff. Like they do a lot of these smaller projects, like solar sail projects, planetary defense awareness, things like this stuff. And so I frequently, because usually what happens is they're they're priced pretty well. Usually has a pretty cool T-shirt. I'm like, yeah, I'll do this one. Yeah, I'll do this one. Maker phone. Do you see this one? No, no. I uh, that sounds familiar. Actually, this is that the modular phone. Um, not that, which I think is a horrible, horrible idea. Uh, maker phone is got to go look up maker phone. And so these guys did a project before, which was like the little mini arcade thing. Mm-hmm. So, oh, so maker this phone is, is it, like a phone. This is a kit. This is like a DIY phone kit. Yep. Do it yourself phone kit. That's clever. And so it, it's a very basic telephone that is a uh, cell phone. And so you get the kit and it's a, you know, put it together sort of thing. And these are people who are into the, the, you know, the maker, like they built this, the little maker, uh, little arc. We're looking at the little game board thing they made. Yeah. And it's, you know, some young people from like Croatia who come up with this really cool, like, Hey, learn how a phone works, learn the fundamentals of this. It's really, you know, effectively priced. And I'm like, I have no expectation of myself. I think about the assembled one. Cause I'm like a sit down and make it, but I'm like, they put effort into it. They have a really good cause. Yeah, that's clever, man. And and they have a fully like sort of they they have a page with a lot of information here and mm-hmm. clearly a lot of work. So yep, this is something that is more than just a proof of concept, probably. And and yeah, that's that's really clever. And it's a it's a good like way to do this Kickstarter. I've I've backed stuff on Kickstarter that I fully like. I'm like, I, this thing's not going to work the way they think it works. But it's like, you know, because some 22 year old kids out of college or engineers or designers, but their hearts in it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to support this because I want to give this this team may go on to do other stuff. And so I'll back this because I just want to see them, you know. <laughs> well, and partly because you know that backing it means you will definitely hear from them on the next project that they have because yeah. you're on their email list. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, imagine, oh my God, you know, it'd be funny. I'd love to do a parody Kickstarter for like Steve Jobs and Wozniak, but like from the early 1970s for selling their blue boxes. Oh, that'd be amazing. Uh, you know, like those were, those were, for those of you know, those were the, their, the first product that the brain trust behind Apple made. Uh, and now maker of iPhone was a device for hacking the telephone system and making free calls. It was a very illegal device. <laughs> Very cool. That would be great. Hire actors that look like them. We want to make this thing to liberate the phone. And da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> we believe all phone calls should be free. Yeah. yeah. So. Very cool. Groovy. Anything else, gentlemen? No, I, no, I think that's it. I think that's it. Thank you for the all email. Right. Yeah, thank you. By all means, uh, you know, if you want a cranky response, please <laughs> email me. If you want a nice response, <laughs> ask Bryce. <laughs> want an informed response, ask, ask uh, what's his face? Uh, Brian. The other one. Uh, anyhow, uh, picks. Uh, I have a pick. Um, I uh, over the weekend I was uh, playing some some video games. I don't know if you've heard of this. Shocker. Video, video games. Uh, video games. Video games. And that's I... me. Video games. <laughs> <laughs> I um uh I got um really into uh, this is like a sequel. Uh, of sorts um but there's a a programming game out that i i really like uh uh called human resource factory or human resource machine and it's like a coding game and so you're learning really basic coding stuff um the uh this is from tomorrow corporation they made um uh, uh what world of world of goo and uh, um, I didn't know. Of course, I, and now I see it in the art style. Of course, yeah. But and so they they've got a follow up called Seven Billion Humans. Human re Human Resources. That's what it was. Human Resource Machine. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and so this this follow up Seven Billion Humans uh, is also a coding game, but it is um, you you have multiple people that you're controlling with this code, and so uh, they've also expanded sort of the coding language that you use from like very in depth if if then else stuff and. Um, uh, counting and, and directional stuff it's it's really it's really really good um and i think if you are interested in coding or i think if you are like a child uh this is really good especially human resource machine is a really nice intro um to coding and how coding works i mean you you play it and you, you don't necessarily know how to build a calculator afterwards but you realize how difficult it is to do like math calculations to use code to divide numbers or or to sort to sort a list of things when you write out the code to do it is incredible because it's it's way more difficult than just the button in microsoft word you know like so. division you like you keep adding i mean it's like yeah how you have to build up the bigger functions through smaller ones is yeah um so yeah that's, that's it's i love i'm familiar they haven't played but i love things like that that help you understand the basics of like logic and what you do and and i i mean like i advise anybody if you're interested in coding just learn just play around learn a little learn something simple or whatever and it just it's a different way of seeing things and these are these are cheap little these are, these are cheap games too like seven million humans is came out a few months ago it's 15 dollars. it's mm -hmm. on the pc it's on the switch now and so it's really good for the touch screen it's probably on ios um it it, it works really well with the touch screen by the way so that's that's my pick Brian, uh, my goodness, has anybody seen this last week's episode of Always Sunny in Philadelphia? No, I saw someone had clipped out the moment that I at least are part of the episode, and I only watched a few seconds of it because I realized it was a big thing, and I don't want to just see that. I'd like to get the whole lead up into it, but I hear it's it's very good. It's a remarkable episode. And I don't think you need to watch all the episodes. You know, it's one of those like, uh, all you need to know is it's not a serialized spo spoiler show. alert. Uh, it's you know, uh, characters change over time. Uh, all you need to know is uh, Mac has come to understand that he's gay and he's processing what that means. Um, and uh, the episode is uh, ostensibly about the the rest of the gang trying to cash in uh, at the pride parade. But instead, it becomes a wonderful, surprisingly um, 
poignant, introspective journey for Mac. It's a wonderful, wonderful episode. The most recent one called uh, Mac Finds His Pride. Yeah, this is uh, episode 10 from season 13. So, you know what's funny is I've I've just started the series. So I'm like, I'm up to like the first season with Danny DeVito there. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, have you seen this new episode of, of All These Stuff? I was like, uh, let me guess. Is, are we going to find out that Max gay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, cer there's certainly allusions they, 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 to it. Yeah, they ran a yeah, very a long, long uh, yeah. setup for that. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't like. I'm like, I don't want to be an a hole and be like, oh, is this going to be? <laughs> oh no, no, no. Like as a matter of fact, I think it was a, a season or two ago. Like, like at some point, they they were hammering it home so hard that that you know that every the the, the running joke was Mac was the only one who didn't get it and then yeah. last season they made that you know apparent and then now uh, this whole season has been you know they engage in reprehensible behavior at all times uh and this season really seems to be a piece by piece meditation on uh just brilliantly written on on you know what what the people I don't I don't know Staying in voice and in character, they managed to say some very, very uh, smart things. And uh, big fan of this season. Cool. I'm, I'm, it's funny because, like I said, I'm just started the season of Danny DeVito as a regular. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel about this new guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my pick. Uh, and it's the same the same caveat that I gave with the last book that I read by him. And that is, this is Tim Wu's The Master Switch. Now, Tim Wu wrote The Attention Merchants, which Tim Wu, uh, I think he's Professor Wu, his, his scholarship is amazing. His research is fantastic. And I love reading his books because of that, because he so deeply, deeply gets into stuff. The Master Switch is a book from 2010 about the rise and fall of information empires. And he spends a considerable amount of time Talking about like the Edison Trust, but like AT and T in particular. A lot of it's about AT and T and and sort of the advantages and the disadvantages that happened when AT and T became the monopoly and and a government backed monopoly. We've always got to underscore that that AT and T was able to work with the federal government to prevent competition. It's right now I can go to Bing, I can go to DuckDuckGo, I can use other search engines, but I still have trouble going to Bing, binging it. And DuckDuckGo to me is a ridiculous name, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm just – I'm that superficial that I just – I can't use that. I can't find myself to type that in. But anyhow, we have options. AT&T, not only did you – you could not hire – use another company for long distance. You couldn't plug another telephone in. It was against the law, and they used the government against that. And so he goes into a long, very, very good history of this in the master switch, and it basically the premise is who controls communications. And in 2010, he's very concerned because of like mergers, corporate mergers, and not to say they're not worth concerned about this, but you know, you go read the attention merchants, which now gets you know years later, which is like, hey, that one thing we're afraid of, there was this other thing which may be even worse, which is social media and the ability to control, and manipulate, and all that, and that's also, you know. I don't agree with his conclusions. I'll just put it that way. I don't agree with his conclusions. I think his conclusions are could create the same problems. But I think as a book, I think it's worth reading. And you may – people here may be like, no, I totally agree with him. Totally agree. That's fine. I recommend the book though because it's so well-researched and he makes – you know, as Brian points out, he's so good at make it presenting the evidence that you're able to come up to a completely different conclusion than he does. So, yeah, that, uh, that's that's how I knew it, it was a good book was was mm -hmm. because I finished it and uh, was surprised to find out that his personal opinion, his prescription, there, there's diagnosis and prescription. He does such a good job of describing the diagnosis that I was surprised to hear that the two of us have very different prescriptions. Yeah. And there's there's. I would say that. uh John McCain's a guy that I respect as a senator, and John McCain identified problems within the system, and John McCain proposed legislation that, and perhaps in like McCain-Feingold, that then created an even bigger problem because of unforeseen, you know, and it wasn't the intent, and I mean, I don't want to get political, but it wasn't because the intent was wrong. We all agree that, you know, we should have openness, transparency, all this, but what happened was not what we thought would happen, many people thought would happen, and it made it maybe more complicated or worse problem, and that wasn't the goal, and that's that's the thing. Some of the woo says, oh, we should do this. I'm like, I think that'll make a bigger problem because it'll cause this. I could be wrong, and I think that you could be very well-intentioned. But uh, it's it's a it's a great book. I highly yeah. recommend this. Yeah. Uh, it's really really good. Yep, agreed. Totally agreed. Uh, so he's got a new book coming out too. I think. Oh, so. right on. So 
I'm looking forward to that. So again, I love reading people. I go like, man, I, I hear your point. I understand you're saying you did a great job of making the case. I feel differently, but I still like what you did. It's been after. There we go. Yeah, uh, the curse of bigness. <laughs> yes, ah, that's what's coming out. Antitrust in the new Gilded Age. Awesome. Uh, hey, everybody. That'll do it for our, our day, our broadcast yeah. day. Uh, we did it. We upgraded the firmware and got a quality connection yeah. between the two of us. Yeah, it actually. It, Soon it, we'll it, have a new router Boot. as well. Um, uh, Justin is live, so uh, we're going to we're gonna go raid Justin. But uh, if you are not joining us on the raid, then I uh, hope you have a good, um, uh, a good rest of the evening. We'll be back tomorrow with Night Attack. And, uh, yeah, anything you got coming up, Andrew? Yeah, you know, just chilling out, you know, kind of just <laughs> taking it easy. Yeah. Uh, I've got to, you, know, <laughs> you know, the funny thing is when you sign book deals, they expect books. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, well. That, coding, 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 coding. Just getting into natural language processing, that working with John Teasdale on the whole Audiomatic project, so. Oh, nice. Oh, right on. Very cool. Uh, well, then, uh, with that, we'll, we'll say good night uh, and a good day, everybody. Oh, good day. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.